Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? We are back. The boys are back in town. Town. Is this is it too late to do promotion for Toronto? No. no. This weekend, we're in Toronto doing a live show in front of 100,000 people. Next weekend. Uh, in front of 100,000 people. <laughs> doing <laughs> Doing a live podcast in front of 100,000 people sounds crazy. We got yeah. Drake pulling up. <laughs> oh, Fred you would Van. definitely get 100,000 people to pull Fred up if Drake. Fred going to be there. We got um, Grady coming in. We're going to have to do everybody with the meet and greet, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Drake you imagine actually, that's like three <laughs> days. That's like four or five Drake days. Ain't sit, bro, 100,000 people for a meet and greet. My <laughs> Man, they going to think I'm Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm charging $50 a sign. Seriously though, uh, ttwtour.com. That's a lot of money. Next exactly. weekend <laughs> in Toronto. It is not too late to RSVP. We already know the numbers. It ain't 100,000, but it's one of our biggest shows yet. So shout out to the six the for biggest. showing love. It is the biggest? Yeah, it the is. Biggest. So shout out to the six. Because Vegas was out there. So if y'all y'all outdo Vegas, then that's crazy. We appreciate it. Yeah, especially y'all. with the environment of Vegas being Summer League. The fact that Toronto, there's nothing going on there that's basketball related right now. And for them to show out like Somebody this. Somebody was lying impressive. in their raps. They really ain't scared of the six. That's true. I'm trying to be running through the six for my woes. Okay. Who your woe? Y'all. Okay. We appreciate okay. that. <laughs> CCW2.com. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, go to the audio platforms, and pre-download uh, Through the Wire podcast. It helps us out a ton. Should I be corny and bring my OVO? No. No, you never. Drake might pull up. I wore my OVO. You do like basketball. I wore my OVOs to, uh, to the Drake show in New York, and uh, one of the label people was like, what did he say? He was like, "Oh man, you a violation." <laughs> Why sit up? Because we was with, we was with OVO. Oh. So it was like, "Oh, you're not supposed to wear OVO when you." It just, that, I guess it just glazing? Looked, it probably just looked yeah, like it's too glazing. glazing to <laughs> oh, okay. Hey Drake, and I was like, "Look, I was like, I don't give a fuck. It's Drake." <laughs> I hope Omar was listening. You know, when he thought he was gonna meet Drake, he was gonna have everything over you. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Drake candle in the little in the little pouch. Don't do that. <laughs> the Drake candle. Got Drake about can do in the pouches. I crazy. got three of them. They smell amazing. <laughs> yeah. right. Smells just like it's bo. <laughs> uh, That's crazy. <laughs> That's a little too far. For me. <laughs> we had a we had a little thing in stream yesterday where they had me listen to J Cole songs and pick between. That was like, actually fire. I was still in that when you was talking about it. And then they did a Drake one, and they was like, "Damn, P, I ain't know you fuck with Drake like that." I'm like, "Yeah, I just, I don't think he's attractive. Like, this, you got Drake fans who like." Man, he's my favorite rapper. He's sexy. He, he I, I'm buying his. I'm buying the candles to smell him. Ain't I, nobody I, ever I, said I Drake see, was sexy. Whoa, I whoa, see whoa. I whoa. Right now with them pink, whoa. Red, pink bands in his hair. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh. Now, I, I ain't never come up here with my hair like that. Oh, That's crazy. Shit. He been tripping recently. Y'all ain't I see me lie. with no nail polish. Nothing wrong with nail polish. I'm just saying, like, don't do that. Yeah, the fu- the Fubu joint from the other day is kind of out there. He was very 2006 at that run. I'm not, yeah. He's just having fun with his help. Yeah, shout out to him. I ain't fucking with the FUBU. Shout out to him. Uh, He fuck around to bring it back. That's the type of influence he got. (laughs) If he bring it back, that'll show how how serious glazing is. It's similar to what Ye used to do in the fashion world. Ye would put on one fit. And immediately the price of everything skyrockets ten times. That's that glazing and effect. Kanye Everybody was wearing backpacks. Yeah. Kanye fist used to low key be kind of bogus. And then low key. <laughs> <laughs> used to. Yeah, that's yeah, what still. that's what they call fashion. Fashion is now just wearing dumb shit and acting like you did something. Yeah. Futuristic, man. You gotta be futuristic. I'm, I'm wearing plastic bag. I'm wearing jewel plastic grocery bags on my feet. Michael Beasley. I'm anti shoe. Watch on the watch on the ankle. Exactly. He's he's before his time though. That's that's gonna happen. Literally, watch on it. Yeah, that's gonna happen. How you even gonna see the time? That's it's you not. About, it's about like the accessory. You wear watch and don't even have a time I on it. I do now. Because I at the wedding I had to fix his watch. Derek too. Derek was t- who did you tell him? I was telling y'all at the wedding. Yeah. I was like, I don't I don't wear watches for the time. I just wear it for the accessory. <laughs> his just say, but it, it takes thirty seconds to set the time. Oh, I know. Mine's Derek just an hour say off. So eleven just, o'clock. Just fix it. It's an hour off. Just fix it. It takes thirty seconds. At some point in the year, it's gonna be right. <laughs> oh no! It, I don't think it would ever. Unless no, yeah, yeah. He, he talking daylight like savings, it go, yada yada yada. Yeah. Oh, so it's like some, I, but you could just take thirty seconds and it's right all the time. You about to be a day at your shit. Need to be specific. <laughs> so when 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 Angie says she need to eat in an hour, and you like, oh, okay, I know she need to eat at five, and you look at your watch like, oh, it's four. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so today we doing what X Factor? 
Mm-hmm. But a Western the Conference mic team. Yeah, yeah, dude, drop the mic. Didn't you have fan questions too? He did have fan questions. I did. Please do that because X Factor's cool, but I feel like we go harder than that. You know what I'm saying? I know it's the offseason. We kind of. I, did, I didn't screenshot. I honestly forgot. Okay, okay it's real. fine. Drop well, the mic. Well, you can just go to the tweet. It's fine. Drop the I mic. I can't. Um, <laughs> we can get to it later. Okay, so first of all, last. Last episode's Drop the Mic was, what's your favorite <clears throat> late career transformation? And so we had talked about like people like Blake Griffin and everything. And a lot of people in the comments, they were mentioning basically like power forwards of that type of nature. They got to expand their game. Uh, Ray Ray says, Kevin Love, main guy, went from a double-double machine to more cities like that stretch four. Happy birthday to Ant World, too. Happy birthday to Ant That's World. That's my favorite guy. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to Ant World. World. I'm surprised we didn't say Kevin Love. I mean, you gotta I think. that mic, Mike. Uh, Peter, I, I think transformation for Kevin Love is not, it wasn't progressively better, but it was just adjusting to the times. I think y'all mentioned people like Blake Griffin, correct? J- Jason Kidd, I remember. Yeah. Um, And actually all Ray of them kind of progressed into the time versus being better. I can't say that Jason Kidd was better in 2011. He was actually probably yeah, worse, no, but he yeah. adjusted to the three-point shot being adjusted, uh, being added. Okay, I'm going to name some people from the comments then. You tell me if you can kind of see it. Al Horford. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He hasn't got better because he was an all-star. In but he made, sure he, three. he made sure he's still serviceable. three-point shooter is crazy yeah. at 30, what, six years old? Yeah. yeah. So that's a very good one. And the defense is still very good. Yep, so. without blocking shots. He's just, he just finds a way to be a, a plus, above plus defender. That's a good one. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge from Alejandro. Nah, I, I feel like. His game pretty much stayed the same his yeah, entire career. He just took a, a little just step back yeah. to shot some threes. A little, his threes might have went took a tick. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't like he improved defense. Like he just was re- he made himself more of a serviceable defender. He kind of just was like the same Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, probably. He's got a ton of po- people forget how many points Lamarcus All just put up in his career. I mean, he was he was an easily how many he averaged nineteen and, a, and nine for his career and total points. He scored twenty thousand points. A lot of people think twenty thousand points is like the benchmark to make the Hall of Fame. He's there. Scored 20,000 points, and he made all NBA teams and all stars, five all NBA appearances. Lamarcus Aldridge is a Hall of Famer. Lamarcus Aldridge is top power four in his heyday. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Former Chicago Bull. Yeah, for 36 seconds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Iris Thomas. Iris fucking Thomas. Your average fan says Serge Ibaka. Yeah. Prime people, well, eventually his offensive game did get better, so I guess that's what they're talking about, especially during that championship run. But Prime Ibaka was out there averaging two and a half, three yeah. blocks per game, and he was all defensive year in and year out. Uh, but, but yeah, what was the he question? did e- evolutionize late, the game a little late, bit. Late career transformation. He always had the jump shot. I just think, again, like LaMarcus, he shot some threes, but he always had a mid range yeah. back at the OKC days. So, I mean, I, I, mean, I guess, though. Uh, I'll say two more. Because his game didn't change. When I think about Evolution, I think like Ray Allen was a go-to guy. He used to dunk on motherfuckers. Then he took the best part of his game with his three-point shoot, and he became a specific specialist three-point shooter. Yeah, hyper-focused guy. So it was like Ibaka didn't become a stretch four. He could just hit a three. Yeah. But he still was a defensive four who took some jump shots. You mm-hmm. know what I'm thinking about now? We're about to go to a part of the NBA in a couple years where like the previous generation is gone. Like right now, we see a lot of players that played in the generation that was heavy two, no three point shot, and then also had to change their game to what it is now, which is like the three point shot is the king. In a couple of years, all of those dudes are gonna be gone, and then the only people we know are the people that basically came in as like three point ball being the king, like from two thousand twelve to now. And it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the next evolution of ball really goes. Because mm-hmm. the go three, the gonna- three is as far as it goes. <laughs> It's, but it's going to go in. It's going to reverse. You think so? Because now a lot of guys are getting a mid-range game. There's a lot of mid-range killers that are being developed. Like Shea. Shea. Cade. Anthony Edwards. Cade has a I good. De'Aaron uh, Fox. De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. Devin Same. Vassell. They not probably at the yeah. level of De, uh, De'Aaron Fox as far as the the how how many they make or how, how efficient they shoot it. But it's it's that Mikael Bridges. Like it's a lot of guys – who shot the mid-range shot extremely good last year. Mm-hmm. And it's a big part of their diet. I think it, analytics still play a huge part in, in hoops right now. But there was a time where, like, everybody was like, don't you don't you dare take no mid-range that jump was shot. No, that, that was, was the Rockets. That was, that was the Rockets. <laughs> that was the Rockets. They were literally, they caught it at mid-range. They was taking a step back. Yeah. You remember when Austin Rivers caught the ball and ran all the way back to the yeah. three? Yeah. Well, it was a time also where the Warriors weren't taking them either. The Warriors were literally shooting just threes and layups. 
just because they Jackson, were so good. They offense, they they offense, they were getting clean looks every time. Yeah, and then Kevin came in and was like, you know what, we are gonna take a lot more mid range jump shots. And if you look at those Kevin teams, they were more mid range jump shots yeah, than Steph three point. Mids. Yeah, we yeah. now, yeah, now you see Steph Curry even now like pump fake get into the mid range. That's game. gotta be because they kind of orchestrated a lot of stuff out that elbow. Because like you give KD his ISO, but then it's also you have people moving. Yeah, you just, can't help. It just don't make sense not to shoot mid-ranges when you can shoot the three so good because teams are naturally going to try to run you off the line and they're going to be so uh, quick to jump at everything you do. So you just That's one of my favorite things about, you mentioned Mikael Bridges' game, where like everybody looks at him as such a threat and a catch and shoot in the corner. Well, this is like, I guess, before Brooklyn where now he's had to expand his game. But like he was such a threat from that corner three point shot, people close out so hard. He'll take one dribble and take the mid range jump shot, mm-hmm. and that was money. It was a couple. This was like the pass dropped the mic, but um, this is like who do you think has the prettiest jumpers? One of the comments said Mikael Bridges. Nah, and I wanted to see how y'all felt about that. This, I it has like a, it has a little bit of a like a twitch to it. It's, it's, it's it does. not a smooth. I won't lie. I like his jumper off the dribble more than I like a catch and shoot. That's yeah. what made me think about it because he was watching that game and he had an awkward ass shot where like he turned around and hit a jumper and it's just like it's just a, it's a Mikael Bridges light shot. It's not because yeah, he got pretty. the long arms. It's no, efficient though. It's definitely not a pretty shot, but it, it goes in. It's definitely not the when you talk about prettiest, his his ass shouldn't be nowhere near the conversation. <laughs> talk about prettiest <laughs> right. jump shots, but uh-huh. I really like I really like that question. What's this week's question? Uh, I'm gonna name one more for you. Okay, because yep. I just want to see what y'all say. But Derrick Rose, you don't got to be skilled, but more so. No, nah, because nah. he he didn't really change his game to where. It really helped. I guess he kind of just – you could definitely see that the injuries have impacted him a lot. Yeah. And he hasn't really evolved into a different form. As his athleticism went down, so did his production. So I don't yeah. really think he evolved for the for the better. Unless he just changes this year when like, we're like, damn, okay, D. Rose is really good still. But I remember D. Mills – I mean, D. Mills. D. Rose knocking down that tray with Minnesota. Oh, yeah. When 50 ball. He had that 50-point game. I remember game. they put that boy in the corner in Cleveland. And Crazy. he was not getting guarded at all. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron job was so fucking difficult that half a season because you had Rose and you had Wade on the court at the same time. You're like, LeBron, please create for them. <laughs> and it just, it, it just, just didn't, didn't work. work out. Didn't he had work. Derek Williams on the court with him. Dwayne Wade was on the Derek Williams, too. man. I, he used to be a dog. College Derek Arizona, Williams, yeah. yeah. He was hitting threes, like a 44% clip and stuff. They see, you said I look like him when I had my blonde dreads. Yep. Oh. oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. One yeah. of those players that I thought was gonna be good. That's why I don't do college scout Tw- tweener. <laughs> yeah. that, like, one of the last tweeners. We've is he seen. playing overseas now or something? Probably. Yeah. I feel like everybody that's no longer in the league is playing somewhere. Got to. I think he was on the team with Boogie. Oh. Oh. I think. Could he? You know, who he kind of remind me of. Uh, oh, you know where he plays? He he's more athletic. Well, the person I'm talking about is less athletic, but Kelvin Johnson a little bit. Keldon Johnson. Who plays like Keldon Johnson? Derrick, Derrick Williams. Williams? Yeah. Hell no, Mike. No. You don't think so? Keldon Johnson? Mm-mm. He too, I don't see it. He bigger and stronger and like way I more. I thought it was Derrick Williams. Like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, six, yeah. Damn. Keldon Johnson like 6'5". Six, six, he's like 6'7". Yeah. <laughs> he plays in, um, uh, in, in the Greek Basket League at Euro, ba- uh, Euro League for Pentheos. Pen, pen, pen yeah. Yes. <laughs> If you know, you know. I just can't pronounce right. it, but if you know, you know. I'm, I'm going to get to the drop the mic. We're okay. spending too much time on it. But this is more so for the for the comment section and for the you know the fans out there. Um, if you didn't know, I did an ox battle, and it was 50 Cent versus Kanye. A lot of people showed their age in that chat. Yes, they did. I ain't going to lie. So I was just curious to see what the what the comment section is looking like. So first question is going to be two. Which player got you into basketball? And also, who won MVP when you were born? And I want to, people is going to be, it's going to be some crazy ass answers on there, but I feel like most people are going to be honest about it. Who won MVP when y'all was born? 1996. Was 1997. That? I couldn't even tell you. Oh, you was born in 1997? Yeah. Young ass. He was born in 1996. Oh, that makes me older. Who won MVP then? Uh, um, is that the Barkley year? I look at it. Or was 97 the Barkley year? That's his year. Is that Barkley or is that Mike's? I don't know. I, the person that got me into basketball is Pierre's dad, and by virtue of that, Allen Iverson, because there was no way to escape Allen Iverson in his household. He was everywhere. Mine was obvious. Mine was Kobe Bryant. No question about it. But on on a very local thing, it was Jamal Crawford because WGN played the Bulls. Carl uh, Malone, <laughs> Michael Jordan, a few KD. Okay. Uh, and what, he was 95 and then Charles Barkley David won Robinson. MVP in 92, 93. Oh, I'm way off. It, yeah, it wasn't 96. It's my sister's birthday. Um, 
But Jamal Crawford and them used to be on WGN, fucking awful as a team. Mm-hmm. But Jamal was cool. He would cook, bro. He was he big ass shorts, still cooking yeah, people. Man. He was wearing S. Dot Carters. It was a uh, it was a bad time at Bulls fandom, but for me as a young dude trying to figure out what the hell he liked, it was perfect. Though those days help me a lot when I'm doing hoop grids, because I just about think the, of like era. those teams, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about like I did Corey Blunt one time. I only know Corey Blunt from playing on those teams. Yeah, and he worked. Uh, you talking about, um, oh man, Chris Duhon, yeah, Form, Ben Gordon, Form, Chris Duhon, Orlando Magic, Chicago Bulls is a diamond every time, every time, every time, every time, and we've seen that combination every Orlando time. and so Chicago many times. five because they want people to be like window card, <laughs> <laughs> <They want Vucevic. laughs> bro. This is funny on the uh, on the honeymoon because we were waiting for our like massages or whatever. Uh, I was playing hoop grids and I was like, let me see how Suzanne can do on hoop grids. But I didn't want to give her today's because she don't know nobody about the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns. It's tough. So I found one with the Bulls and it was the Orlando Magic one. Um, and she got, I think she got five out of the nine. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's that's pretty damn good for somebody that don't actually watch ball or anything. What she do for the Bulls? Um, she put Vucevic. Okay. Um, it was also um, all defensive was the other one. She put Noah. She put Jimmy Butler. Oh. Which hit. And then the last one, oh man. Um, oh, I think it was Bulls. Was it Bulls 76ers? And she put Jimmy Butler there and then put Joe Kim Noah on the other. I don't remember. Either way, she got five out of nine. And I was like, that, that's pretty good. You don't Justin Holiday is a good Bulls Sixers one. Yes, it is. Yeah. Andre Nocioni. Is the oh, best she, Andre is the, yeah, that Marco is. Marco Bellinelli. Yeah. Every time I put Marco Bellinelli, it's never like a good percentage. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Even you for the 76ers, like he the plays morning. 20 I, I remember, I, I'm pretty sure I did that one. Raptors. Yeah, rap, it was the Raptors one I did, and it was a really good one. Just got to think about players that's been around the league, man. I ain't even been playing that recently, though. I've been having a lot of fun with Immaculate Grid. I haven't been doing hoop grids either. I go through Immaculate Grid. I try the baseball, football, and basketball at one sitting, and I still haven't done nine for nine on baseball or football. Yeah, I think you've, hoop, been, a, you've gotten eight for I nine. I got eight for nine for baseball a once. Yeah. yeah, I think hoop grids is better than portal. Pirtle had a longer run, I think. I think Pirtle was on was on top of the game for like three months straight. And I was just dropping that bitch. I was Same. dropping that content every day, and it was 200,000 views every day. I think, yeah, for that, for what KB saying, it was better. But, like, as, as far as doing, what challenges my mind more is hoop grids. 100%. That's why I don't do it as much as I used to, because every time I do it, people want to see, and it's a whole thing. Like I, I think that could be your market, though. I'm going to take an hour to do that That's shit. That's why you be thinking in your head. But you're also going to be talking, and then it's just also – people be trying to just blurting out answers, too. I don't look at the chat. I don't look at the chat. See, I, I wanted to, like, pitch y'all on some ideas and shit. Um, I guess we could do that after the pod. But yeah. that was part of it. I and just it, want to I want to be y'all, like, um, content manager for four months, just the rest of the year, where I help y'all with content, thumbnails, title, and shit like that on y'all individual come shit. Come on. And we all run it up. All Mike wants is a – But with Mike, it would be more his stream push. shit – Cause you can play mad, but I feel like no. if you added challenges to your shit, it would be more yeah, interactive. And you can clip it and put also it like YouTube, I think like having that aux battle is a staple too, and I can find other things to like yeah. make that for sure. Just that aux battle was actually yeah, you 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 aux battle really well. was a disappointment. Yeah, that, great idea, nothing to do with you. But it was for the, the people who yeah. was picking the songs. I can't believe I picked out that outfit for that aux battle. And I can't believe somebody picked Whoa as a song. The, yeah, the, the Woo. Yeah, woo. There's it's, no way. Uh, I wasn't there, so I just know you did it. I ain't. I don't know the context and things. That's awful. Fuck with the <laughs> There's so have... many classic Fifty Cent songs for that to be a song that was picked. Was Twenty One Questions who remix. Who's the guy? There's what? a There's a guy that does ox battles all the time on Twitch, and he he would find like a meme, and the and have two people say, pick a song that fits the the vibe of the meme, mm-hmm. and that shit is fun to me. To see what people, because everybody interpret things differently. He lets his chat decide who won and shit like that. Next ox battle you have, I want to represent somebody because these motherfuckers fucked up the vibe. Let me be. Let me go against Pete. In. Come on, oh, I'm washing you, Derek. <laughs> Come on, it's we got it. Patrick oh. CC is his name. I think it's the hardest for y'all. No, no, you do the selection. Yeah, you. You tell them. However you decided last I, time, we should just keep the same formula. Okay. okay. So what what did you do exactly? So what I did is I had just a, a pool of rappers, and I tiered them up. So I have an A-tier rappers, B-tier rappers, C-tier. And this is all just based on hits Okay. because you want to perform well in the aux battle. And then so I have a spinner, and then I'll have an a, all the A-tier people in the spinner, and I just spin them twice. Okay. That's that's clean. 
That's clean. And then you give people like what, like ten minutes to go find songs or shit. Or, or how do no, because we do this. It's selection Sunday, so we do it on Sunday, and it don't happen until Wednesday. So we have time for okay. people. Well, if they want to do it this time, you don't have to find people. See, I'm different. But they though. have like what? You need to write. When on the we spot. do ours, we got to get in Discord with the camera. Yeah, one hundred percent. I want to perform my shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to make people feel the song because the music. I, I'm want to be man. Let's get it. There's a lot of content that could. Yeah, let, let's let, get it. Let me be your man. Free of charge, of course. I bet. If anything, I'm I'm paying y'all because I want to get y'all some good con, uh, some thumbnail designers and shit like that, some TikTok creators and stuff like that. So we all oh. we all about to eat. Naran, they coming for your job. If you edit TikToks, DM me. <laughs> that boy said, "I got a job." What happened for you? to the dude that I put? put that he's too slow. Oh, I've been waiting on TikToks for a month. Uh oh. <laughs> I will TikTok put, ain't that shit. Oh, well, I guess it could be more. I can't put you on to my new guy. Too <laughs> <Gatekeeping. funny. laughs> He got a lot of work he's dealing with right now. Hey, he take you? my he take my four hour streams and make YouTube videos out of them. So he's busy. Yeah, do your thing. He's busy. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for jobs, and we we hiring, we hiring, and, and TTW INC. Uh, what, what are we doing? We're doing X Factors. Yep. For the Western Conference. For the Western Conference exclusively. Uh, how, how do y'all usually tackle X Factors? I sometimes do it. Some teams is more of a player. Some things is more of like a... Factor? Yeah, factor. Oh, mm-hmm. X Factor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, I think each team could have a little something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I look at the team and I think about... Expectations. Expectations. What's yeah, that needed. too. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I also look at the player about what they're capable of and their expectation. And if this player, every team I think has guys where you like, he's going to do what he's going to do. Yep. He's going to do what he's going to do. Who can help them maybe get to a higher level or reach their fullest pe- expectation? And it's this guy needing to do this at his best. Yeah. That's the X factor. The Lakers, you knew Gasol was going to be all star, Flair, all NBA. You knew Kobe was going to be all-star, going to be all-NBA. Oh, Lamar Odom is sixth man of the year? Oh, hell yeah. The Lakers about to rock. You know, they about to go crazy. I thought you were about to say yeah, Andrew Bynum. No, no, no. You Lamar Odom was, uh, I mean, you could have. seen PPG. But Lamar that, Odom was, uh, was the X Factor. Mike was the original Bynum fan. He I've was. never met a Bynum fan in my fucking Mike, life until <laughs> Mike. Mike used to play me in 2K with Bynum and used to dominate. And I Love used to be Andrew so Bynum. mad. And he was good. Don't get me wrong. Like, no, he, he was, was really, really, dog. really, really he was good. Dog, like. I remember when crazy. they drafted him. He was a baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The 10th overall And I think pick. that's what kind of like made me like, like him even more is because he was so young. Yeah. But he had like, he had a grown man body. Like he was bigger than Pal Gasol who was running the four with him. Do you remember when he went at Shaq? I think so. Well, I forget what team he was on, but I remember that moment though. He was on the Lakers. No, I'm talking about who was Shaq, where Shaq was. The Heat. Oh, okay. he, they traded him to the Heat. Yeah. And it was a young Bynum. Cause Kobe and them had the beef, and he tried to go at Shaq. I'm pre- then Shaq get him once, and but he got him back or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a time! What a time when the four was seven foot and your five was seven foot as well. Mm. Are we still here? <laughs> kind of. Who is it? Like two teams that's running that right now? Oh yeah, Shaq got the the tip dunk and Bynum ran up court and tried to start some shit. Give me, give me that ball back. Okay, yeah, I don't remember this, but it got one million views on YouTube, so it's real. Um. Yeah, the game has evolved so much, bro. We've been through a lot of evolutions. I think that's, that's, one, that's one episode we got to do. I've seen D. Mills is starting to watch like them hardwood classes again. Yeah. It kind of like, it takes your brain and it's just like, takes everything you kind of already know and it just like throws it out when you watch the spacing on the floor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because you'll watch like four people who dead ass can shoot or won't even think to shoot a three and it's just one dude trying to go to the hole or some shit. That, that make me lean to the older side. Yeah, I was like, watching. I think like, it's a lot harder yeah. to score like that. When I, was, I see yeah. that Kobe averaged thirty-five points per game in that type of spacing, mm-hmm. in that pace, at, yeah, yeah, I look at that much different than a guy who's averaging thirty today. Same shit. If you if you got to like you going to the hole and you got to throw one get past a king, then you got Ralph Sampson right behind <laughs> him. <laughs> For real, it's yeah. gonna be hard to finish it. Bro. I'm uh, working on the video right now where I'm like. I've been rewatching NBA Finals. I think you gave me this idea originally. I, well, you said you were doing it. I said I'm doing it too. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Um. And part of my video is figuring out what era was it harder to play a certain position, right? Is it harder to be a point guard in the 90s or is it harder to be a point guard now versus the early 2000s? And I'm work- I started with centers because centers is such a dominant part of basketball. Mm-hmm. It is, in my opinion, based on what I've seen so far, so much harder to be a center right now versus the other days. Because they'll break you out. There's no yeah. more help. Like you said, you got past the king. Ralph Sampson got your ass. You get past Powell, 
buying them got your I ass. I was watching, Nowadays, uh, you on the island. But it's just you. Here's an argument. Here's an argument. Back in the day, if I was a center, I had to go down there and bang every, All day. every fucking day. Yeah. night. Yeah. Everybody Today, the matchups yeah. were very much tougher back in the 90s. Today, I'm now. playing against what? Fucking Vucevic. Rudy whoa, 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 Gobert, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, Somebody, the only real Boots bruiser bang. you can get some off nights. You can go against Clint Capella. Like the only real bruiser I'm facing that'll probably make me feel it the next day. Pause is Sabonis. Oh, I thought she was going to say Joel. Joel. Joel and Jokic. I think Jokic, that those are the three. Yeah. Those are the three that are bruising. Steven Adams. Types. Joel and Jokic. He's go. not getting t- touches and stuff. You don't got. He's not getting. He's yeah. getting boxing you out That's and going true. for rebounds. Yeah. Joel. And, Joel and Jokic kind of. They're such in a tier that you be yeah, yeah. yeah. Without being said, those two. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then but like for sure, Nick Claxton is with all due respect, he's good. He's gonna make you work on the other end to block your shots more than anything. But he ain't like beating you to fuck up, or like Jared um, Allen. He ain't you beating said, you up. Yeah, uh, Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, Mitchell Robinson may make you work for the glass, but is he necessarily? Maybe you, that. Ooh, that's you know what? Another thing that always stands out too, and it even it even happened in that like that two thousands or whatever finals game he was watching with the Lakers when Kobe caught that that mid range. That happens so much, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. for the catch and shoot three, that shit was catch and shoot 15, Midi. 17 feet out. Yeah. Richard yeah. Hamilton made a whole career no off more. of that, just running around no getting more. mid-range jumpers. I was watching Jason Terry do that in that Maverick series against the Heat, and I was like, damn. He so can- that's the that's the Heat series. No, you watched the older one. Yeah, the 06. No, 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 no. I thought I seen you watching a Mavs versus Thunder with I Kevin did. Durant. I did watch that, and then I also watched the 06 game versus So that the has Heat. Josh Howard. Yep, Josh yeah, Howard. Josh yeah. Howard, young Dwayne That's Wade. That's 2011, yeah. the OKC game? Yep. Yeah. Okay. But I, another video could be the death of the bruiser. We just went through the, like, I'm sure we probably forget. Like, PJ Tucker would probably be classified as a bruiser, but he's 6'2". Um, but for the most part, bruisers do not exist. And I feel like back 10 years ago, just say 10 years ago, every team had a couple bruisers. Yeah, Charles mm-hmm. Oakley will Break your neck. We were talking about who was though. He's just talking about uh, Pekovic on uh, oh, yeah. a bruiser, uh, literally a bruiser, yeah. and he was gonna try to get every rebound. What do y'all yeah. think evolved the big man and becoming more finesse and not more sort of bruising aspect? Who was I, the big man? You said. Yeah, who was the big man that changed that game? Was it Dirk? Mm-hmm. I think it's. I think it has to be a player, but I think it's more so like him. evolution of the game. Like yeah, they say. understood the spacing. Like. It, it became a necessity to like you need people that can help your your stars or whatever because it's hard. Like you said back in the eighties, like it's nothing but help defense. You can take yeah. that help defense away if you can get somebody who can stretch out the floor. I'm gonna say European bigs. Yeah, that's why I had said Dirk because like he was but he, Bonner. but he was such a power four. Yeah, when I think I'm talking Paul Gasol, I'm talking Mark Gasol. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like legitimate centers. Dirk was always kind of. They used to think Dirk was soft. So yeah. versus like finesse because he shot so much. Pau Gasol would take a jump shot, but he ain't shooting nowhere near as much as Dirk. He still was down there in the trenches. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say somebody like Pau Gasol, but it's hard to put it on one player mm-hmm. because you even have guys like Amari Stoudemire just going smaller. Yeah, when Amari was at the five, when it he was, did that, oh, he was so was, much faster. He was so much like, faster than the people center. People look at that shit like it was witchcraft. We ain't never <laughs> seen him a yeah. player like him at the five. <laughs> So I think that has some him and Marion at the four. Yeah, yeah. I also think that people got to the realization that we can't have a five man lineup with two people can't do anything offensively. Yeah, because <laughs> that used to be how it is. We just had defensive specialists, somebody to punch you in your face every once in a while, and that was the game of basketball. We're gonna rely on PJ two Brown people to score and Alonzo Mourning in the front court. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. PJ Brown. Yeah, PJ Brown could hoop, but it's just like yeah. I Pete. feel like there's a lot of players from that era. They were like, they like, damn, I wish I played in 2020. Mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Cause, cause I was watching um, Harvard Classic. It was uh, okay. No, it was the Warriors versus the Lakers. I don't remember the context. It was just on TV. And I'm watching um, Twan, Antoine Jameson. I'm like, imagine Antoine Jameson in 2023 where he has hella space in to get those same shots off. Like, it would be crazy. He's either going to be extremely good or he's going to be like average. I you know always, who reminds yeah. me of Antoine Jameson in today's game? Who? Kyle Kuzma. Oh. I yeah, see I can yeah. see that. I could definitely see that. So it's just like. Yeah, I, I think Rashard that. Lewis will be great in his era. Absolutely. Like, six he's a guy that sniper. fits in the air because yeah. he shot the ball. And he was a good defender. He put Think the about ball if he ever got the value that you get from now. The volume yeah. as far as how many three-point attempts you can get up now. But if I'm not mistaken, Rashard, that's what I'm saying. Rashard Lewis used to shoot. One of the shoot. first to like hit it. That's a lot of yeah. like 3 and D people. Who I felt like just didn't take that three enough. 
Oh yeah, because well back then it was, just, they didn't it really. Because yeah. I I remember I've, you're talking about kind of like those Heat teams were just like older players. I yeah, remember 2004, like, 2005. He averaged six point one threes. I amazing. remember Shane Betty. It felt like he was a really good shooter, mm-hmm. but he just I felt like he never really took that many. Yeah, it's, it's all well. That's also a different crazy. game where like in that era, mm-hmm. you had guys that was a job. That's why I be telling people like. It's so much efficiency police in today's game where that's like everybody's just hunting basketball reference and like data, data, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and just analytical stuff. But back in the day, the game was valued different. Mm. So Carmelo, Kobe, T Mac, all of these guys that y'all try to, you know, harper on the the efficiency for, that was their job. Every team wanted a guy who could take and make tough shots to bail you out. Like that was a thing. Yeah, it's like you'll live with Kobe shooting over a double team because he is getting paid to do that. So it's like the three and D guy, you guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we ain't even we ain't looking at how we can make our three and D do valuable. Shane Battier guard Tracy McGrady. <laughs> okay, guard him. And, and I if love Kobe needed you yeah. make a shot, or who, he played with teammate. But if teammate need to make, need you to make a shot, knock it down. But we ain't really trying to ex- extract so much offensive. In 2009, 2010, can y'all guess how many players in the league averaged five three-point attempts per game? Five or more. So you want us to guess the players? No, just how many? Just the total oh. number. You say, say it one more time. I, I, look, I looked at this a, a- year ago. Um, average more <laughs> than five three five or more three-point attempts per game. 2009, Six. 2010. In I'll, 2009, go, I'll, 2010. I'll go eight. Six. Four. It's 18. Oh. Can you guess 2022 to 2023? At least 200. What year did you just At say before that? 200? 200? That's most of the league. That's yeah, more that, than yeah. half of the yeah. league, my guy. If they got the <laughs> minutes, they would take that many They threes. got Steven Adams out there. Se- Chuck se- and se- 75. Word. I'll go No, 46. 75 is I'll go 46. Um, I'll go 52. 82. Oh, 76 wasn't you, were, you were close. I, I thought that would be... That sounded too high. The reason I was I dove into this a year because I was looking at Pedro Stojakovic and I was like, "Damn, he averaged that many threes. And I went back to his time, but that's way after him. Two thousand. I did the same shit in yeah. two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. I did the same yeah. shit, but this is a little bit before that too. With like Chris Mullen, because we know he all can shoot. Motherfucker barely averaged any threes. For real. When I was yeah. looking at Pedro shit, it was like three dudes averaging yeah. above five threes. That's like Larry I, Bird is known as a great shooter, but he didn't. The volume was not there. That's he was killing that mid range. Yeah, the, yeah. my favorite part of the game. La- Larry Bird at his peak, um, in ninety one, as far as three point attempts go, four point three, three point three. Okay, mm-hmm. shot eighty nine, uh, eighty nine, <laughs> thirty nine percent there. So his efficiency was always there. Um, he just didn't get the volume up. Um, but nowadays, you know, let let him let him play nowadays. Let me see what was the best. Shooting a Shane Battier did. You know, it's funny. When you know, Shane Battier is one of the original uh, analytic guys in all of basketball as a, as yep. a player. Like was, defensively, right? Because he would look at like, this is his hot spot. This is where he don't yep. like the, this is where he the don't most like threes the he shot was 4.6 with uh, Houston, so with Tracy McGrady. He shot 4.6 threes a game at a 37% clip. That makes a lot of sense because that – this is an interview I watched years ago. We were on a flight to – um Y'all remember that one flight we took to New York where it was five people on the entire plane? Oh yeah, yeah. The, um, and three of them worked for the same company we worked. Yes, for. Yes, it was like a, it was like home. a private jet unintentionally. Yeah. On that flight, I listened to a Shane Battier podcast. He was on a thing, and was it good? It was really good. I was like, damn, I want to talk to bro because of that. He was saying that in Houston is where he started to care about the analytics part of basketball, and he was saying like, you know, he he wasn't patting himself on the back, but he's like, there wasn't a lot of people in the league that really looked at the tendencies of the people that they were guarding in the terms of the numbers. Like, you watch the film and say, okay, Kobe liked to do this, but what are, what are the numbers? Is this a efficient shot for Kobe? Should I be? Should I care about cutting him off at this spot? And he's one of the first people to do that, and he also translated that to his offensive game. Is like, I mean, the easiest one's like three is greater than two, swear, and I'm a good three-point our, shooter. When we had Metal World Peace on the show, he was talking about the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he would yeah. do something similar or just like... It was more than just like I'm playing defense. Like I, you have to know who you're guarding too. Yeah, maybe you might have to know what he ate for breakfast that morning. Those type of guys in this area, in this era, would get paid <laughs> so much more money than what they were back then. For sure, they not they weren't valued that at, as highly as they were. Ron they should have been. It's like when you go back and rewatch Ron Artest and Indy, and you watch him defensively, you like, bro, he's as a perimeter guy, he's got to be like a top in the history of ball. Let's say top ten. 
and because I, I want to say top five, but I, there's a lot of ball that I haven't watched. I can't attest to the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and the 60s mm-hmm. and the 50s and the late 40s. But, man, he was a hound. And not just in the traditional, like, oh, he going to guard your best player, but, like, everything. Team defense, in the yeah. lanes. He, he just did he everything. He was, like, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, like, 240, 250. Couldn't dribble to save his fucking life. But can still drop twenty a night on you. And I swear he was talking about that time he like he had games where he said he was like two seventy. But that's just perspective. That's the same way to Zion, and <laughs> yeah. he was moving on that court yeah. laterally. Yeah. Yeah. He would defend guards. He's a good high interview, level. bro. I love yeah, I love talking to him. Grown man, bro. Yeah, I love talking. Grown man. He had a little stretch with the Kings. I never forget. He was getting fucking buckets, man. He was on the before this year. He was on the last Kings team to make the playoffs. Mufuga had ninety when ninety three, I believe, like the jersey and I'm And I'm like, what the hell? But he was getting. He had like a little tape on his hand. He fucked his wrist up or something. He's getting buckets. I'm damn. I ain't no Ron Artest. Get it? Like I remember being a kid. Like damn. Yeah. Uh, X Factors. X factors. X factors. What's, what's the first team, man? Uh, let's let's start off with the L.A. Lakers. Mike Mikey, who is the X factor from your L.A. Lakers? Uh, I put D'Angelo Russell. That's exactly I, who I put down as well. I think obviously, we, like Pete said, we know about the top guys. Uh, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, gonna do their thing. Austin Reeves seems like he's ahead of the curve from what everything I've been seeing and from what I've been hearing. So I think the next guy in line is probably D'Lo offensively. Our defense, I feel like, is still be elite. But we need to have those times. Where we need less times where our offense is kind of lacking. If December 15th came around and James Harden is still not traded. Trade him. Would you trade D'Angelo and Rui for James Harden? I would. Yeah, I, don't, I would. You shouldn't even have to think about that. I think that's a go do it. I don't even think. I, I, that's so That's so yes that I think the 76 is say no. No, I'm yeah. not saying <laughs> it's a realistic thing. But I'm just I'm trying to gauge the value I seen the, the fan I seen bases. Uh, something on Reddit, too, and it was basically like, would you rather have Chris Paul's thirty million dollar contract or James Harden's thirty five million dollar contract? James Harden's. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still just got value, a, no matter what. Especially if it's with Bron and AD, you ain't got to worry about James having two for twelve nights because it's not that really relevant because he'd be the third guy, and Chris Paul can't stay healthy anyway. I would rather take the the James one. James is averaged twenty one and ten. I would love seeing. Imagine Harden with LeBron just doesn't even sound right though. Can Can James Harden stop with the the Harden ball to get? Into LeBron's system. That's the question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know because he loves to run that pick and roll so much. It's just, I don't. It'll be hard to even imagine. Doc Rivers was talking a lot of shit about that in that interview. Who was he on? Was he on with Stack and Matt Barnes? Yeah, I think so. Um, he was talking a lot of shit about like I want to play this way, but we had to play Harden ball. Harden ball. My X thing. factor uh, was D'Angelo. I had two, D'Angelo Russell, but it is also Austin Reeves because. I think a lot of the shit with Austin Reeves is a small little sample size. He had a really good uh, season, but a lot of the hype come from the playoffs um, and some of this FIBA stuff. But I think he got to turn that into like him actually being that player on a night-to-night basis. And um, it's going to be an adjustment. People know who, who he is. He's going to be a highlighted name on the scouting report. Um, but I think he has to take what he did in the playoffs and put that into – production for a full season that has to be him he has to be the third guy for the lakers next to lebron and ad that's a lot of pressure that's a, that's a lot of pressure um i think he can do it but i definitely think for them to be the team that they want to be he has to be that guy because yeah. i feel like last year they didn't really know who that guy was and in the playoffs he did a good job being that guy but i think with this new team you bring it back for a full year with the acquisitions they made over the summer if you have lebron you have ad and you know on a night-by-night night basis you're consistently getting Austin Reeves to be that guy you can count on, then you look around and it's like, okay, hopefully we get D'Lo tonight. Hopefully we get some Ruby. Hopefully we get, you know, an explosion from Gabe Vincent. So, um, but that's I do I, have D'Angelo Russell. That's why I'm happy that this is like we're starting off with this roster. This is not no mid-season thing or anything like that or, you know, for the first, like, foreseeable future it doesn't even look like this team should be desperate to make a trade you know right away we've got to kind of see what wait and see what happens but like we're gonna have all 82 games to figure that out so that's why i like that clean slate instead of like we got to make these moves and make it happen after the uh the trade it won't be no panic in february when everything seems like it might be going to shit so like now y'all can be cool calm and take y'all time ain't no way i'd rather i Put 1500 on it that we don't start like we did last season. Oh, yeah. And, y'all, and y'all would have to try. Yeah. To start <laughs> like, yeah. You and, I'm trying to think if I would take that back. Two wins? 
They was they was as, he, he, they was as bad was as the Rockets. 11? It might have been two. And yeah, y'all was as bad as the Rockets, bro. Yeah, it's, no, it's almost, it's almost impossible. No y'all can't do that again. No if y'all try. Yeah, no, it's almost impossible to do it again. But anything you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Minnesota Timberwolves. I said, um, Cat and Rudy Gobert, yeah. like that big tandem. I feel like they got to really figure that out. I said, Cat. Cat is the better I, player. Okay. Cat yeah. needs to figure it out. I came with Cat, and I was, th- I was thinking, um, <laughs> damn. Um, is that a weird one? Because he's obviously one of the better players on the team. Is it is it weird to have him as X Factor? I don't I don't think so because his production is so integral to what this team wants to do. Um, you saw when he went down last season how much they struggled. It's not like they were great before he went down, but how much they struggled after he went down. Um, I I can't help but to think that because Anthony Edwards looks so damn good in this FIBA thing. That he's about to hit this superstardom, and I'm like, do it even matter what else around him? Like they about to be there. I'm talking myself into the it, wolves it for the matters. second year in a row. I, it matters because you can't have just two bigs on a court just offensively. I him. think you can because Cat is a. It's not a bit. He's big. Yeah, but he don't play as PJ Brown and Alonzo Mourning did. <laughs> I think it does just because the West is so good that in order to get what we want to see from the Wolves, because I'm bought into the Wolves as well. Because on yeah. paper, you have Anthony Edwards, you have Rudy, you have Cat, you have Jaden McDaniels, you have Kyle Anderson. They should be a good defensive they, team against This team yeah, very should be good. really, really, really good. It should be a solid playoff basketball team. And in order for that to happen, it has to be, no matter how much superstar Anthony Edwards is, he has to have some uh, cohesion around yeah, him sure. to make everything, um, you know what I'm saying, on point. So, I'm putting the pressure on Cat because I know Anthony Edwards is going to do what he got to do. I know what I'm getting from Rudy. I'm not expecting like anything different from Rudy. He's going to block some shots, rebound, and he's maybe going to help you be a top ten defense. That's maybe what he make does. A, a couple dunks. Cat <laughs> maybe make some dunks. It's crazy. Is so talented between the two, especially offensively, that I'm putting the pressure on him to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Catch and shoot some threes. Figure out how to how to make your presence felt at the four. But he's too talented to where it's like, man, how do we make this work? Yeah. He should be able to make this fucking work because he's, let he's me that talented. This, let me this is a guy this. who a few years ago, every poll for GM was picking him to make their franchise around. Yep. It was it was last year a lot of times on the defensive side of the ball, Cat playing that four spot was actually pretty hard to watch. He mm-hmm. Well, we knew that. Yeah. We knew that. None, none, so, none of that should be surprised. But luckily he has Rudy behind him. Yeah. And he's got Jaden McDaniels and Anthony Edwards who shows that he can lock in. And, I mean, Mike Conley, Mike Conley he's old. Yeah. He's old now, so he's yeah. not as good as he was five mm-hmm. years ago. But like they have pieces around here where like his defense matters, but it's not like gonna be the super detriment to the team's success. Mm-hmm. Now let me ask y'all this, because a lot of y'all was kind of like y'all putting faith into like this kind of coming in like cat having that type of season or whatever. How long do y'all give it for like a sample size before you be like, this doesn't work? All star break. So you're saying an all star break trade one of the bigs if it's not working? Trade Car Anthony Towns. Yes. My X Factor, I, I literally put the Twin Towers, you could Say cat, but I said to either make it work or not make it work, so some they can know like this. We got to make a true. Uh, I may agree, have to make I a true. KB, I was damn near ready last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not trading cat. I would trade Rudy. Well, at least try to not this. trade it. Yeah, you, you keep saying that every time. Are you? What are you who's trading take, for? Yeah, and who's taking Rudy? I don't know. Right, but don't you want to get back good things on your investment? I do, but I also feel like cat is a huge part of my investment already. That. No, issue. you invested five first round picks in Rudy Gobert. That's your investment. But he's right also now. a guy that I drafted high overall already. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah, like you've also drafted Derek Williams, Johnny Flynn. You also drafted Ricky Wiggins Rubio, and you traded him a Wesley couple years Johnson. before that. Don't act like y'all value draft picks now. <laughs> I just named four. You can't tell me the last team they fucking played on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Johnny Flynn? I don't know. The damn, that's a damn saying. I know he's a guard. Okay. Who was where was he drafted? Minnesota. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, he know what <laughs> I was meant like in the grand oh, Steph oh, Curry. Oh. He's drafted for Steph Curry. Oh. Um, but no, I, I, again, on surface level, I understand what you're saying. Carthy Town's probably the more valuable piece. That's why you want to keep him. But that's why I want to trade him because yeah. he is the more valuable piece. And Rico is still you, pretty good. You invested all of that into Rudy. So hypothetically, Derek, you trade him. You're getting, you know how they say pennies on a dollar? You're yeah. getting less than that. Yeah, you, you're throwing him away for free, honestly. And I think... And, and your team as a whole will f- change drastically if you put Cat at the five and you able to unlock his true capabilities. We've seen him at the five. <laughs> and he was, was all in the They made the playoffs for Rudy. 
He back on when Cat was at the five, he was all NBA, and that's the guy record. that y'all was talking about that all GMs want to build their franchise. Yeah, all NBA hey, was a what? long time ago. Cat at the four. How many all NBAs did Rudy get? I don't know. Way more than Carlton Towns. I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> when the last time Carlton Towns were all NBA? 2018, 2019. Was we a minute guess. ago, man. I'm gonna double check. Um, I fuck around and have a been. car. <laughs> 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 like, like seriously, uh, Carl Anthony. Again, I understand what you're saying. He's a more Derek. versatile. Like obviously, he had a more skilled and versatile. You think more teams would give you good stuff for Cat or for Rudy Gobert? I don't think. I don't even think this Rudy Gobert trade is something you're trying to get something good for. I'm oh, just, 2022. Cat was 13. Okay. 2022. This is more so just me washing my hands. I'm sorry, Cat. I'm sorry, Cat. So do you think washing your hands? What with year it, was that? 2020, 2022. <laughs> what was happening? Like yeah, how did that happen? I don't. I don't remember honestly. Is that when they played the Grizzlies? Yeah. In the first round. Yeah. Because that wasn't last year. It was the year before that. And that's when they played the Grizzlies. They got to come, to, they gotta come to Minnesota now. Shout out to Cat. I'm sorry, Cat. Shout out to Cat. <laughs> Even though I don't say nothing with disrespect anyway, I'm sorry, though. Shout out to Cat. But um, I'm still trading Cat before I trade Rudy just because I invested so fucking much. And I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with KB. You don't just give a player. But that's not I, how this I shit works. I was work. about to say, when's the last time you traded four to five picks for a player and then they go on the next season? They go on the next year. Yeah. And, and who wants him? That's the thing. How do you convince another team to take the who, name it's, me it's two years teams. left on the contract? It's not like it's an expiring deal that you could throw to Charlotte for Gordon Hayward. Name Charlotte, me two teams. Charlotte might take that contract. They got Mark Williams though. Name me two teams. They that you're at the up. Uh, okay, we'll see if he how much uh, time he gets. Atlanta. This. You hitting up Atlanta? Why would they? Why would they do that? They just keep playing. They, they might find him. The name might intrigue them a little bit more. So then you're bringing back Clint. But he's also a guy who out of I don't I feel like I could feel comfortable with. Putting them on the bench, having them coming off. Uh oh, the Spurs. What? The Spurs get them what? have Rudy. Rudy yes. at the five, Vic at the four. What? I feel that's like Rudy Gobert, just because you traded five first round picks for him and the price that you're paying for him, you have to start. Bro, it. I can't remember the last time Clint Capella came off the bench, bro. He oh, also rookie, isn't a name season? that demands a start either. To me, he does. Clint Capella's pretty good. He's he, had, good. he had the one bad year. No, he's I ain't good, like, but like, if you're if you have Carl Anthony Towns, he's also a guy that I'm like, okay, you got to come off the bench now. Dallas is on their knees what? right now, hoping for Clint yes. Capella right now. <laughs> like they need him. I'm not saying Clint Capella is a bad player. I know he he's a starting center, but on the he's team, he's an above average yeah, starting. center. If you put him on a team with Cat, and you're saying the true version of this team, we're at our best when Cat is at the five. I Why not just that. flip flip Clint for Tim Hardaway? But, but what is that best? I think they're. I don't know. We have to. We've yet to see Anthony Edwards at this level and Cat at the five. Then Rudy Gobert. In the we just, okay, that's not necessarily true because it's not like they play every single yeah. minute locks there with those three on the court. But we also just seen them when he was All NBA 2022 and they lost to the Grizzlies. I feel like that was a good. That, that was, was a good year, and also that that team they lost that series on themselves. They blew multiple twenty point leads, and that's it. So they sure that was a crazy series. I yeah, love they, that series. They were up twenty in most of those games that they lost. And that actually <laughs> happened for leading up to that. We're like, damn, the Timberwolves can never hold a lead. They can never score in the fourth quarter. What is happening? And yeah, again, I'm still very excited about the Timberwolves. I've I've convinced myself again with another year of them figuring things out. I, I want to go back and look at the pick and roll numbers with Rudy Gobert and, and Mike Conley this season because they were really good in Utah a couple years before that. I don't know if that translated to nowadays. Um, I do believe that you know the Anthony Edwards discomfort around Rudy Gobert will subside a little bit. Uh, and they, they just, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're yeah. going to be fine. Mike very Conley good, is very great. Fun. Carl Anthony Towns is the better player. Like that. Yeah. I just think that he has more value. You know, that's how, that's how this shit he go does. in the NBA. You, uh, the Timberwolves feel like that team in 2K where you got too much in one position. You want to make a trade, but nothing seemed right. So <laughs> yeah. you just can't. You got to <laughs> hold on to You got to hold on. Yeah, you gotta just got to. Because uh, I'm against trading Rudy for nothing as well. Like that's why I'm like keep him. Because I don't see no team that's giving you anything what you want. Because so. it's not like he's not productive. They were a top 10 defense this season. They were not a top 10 defense the year before that. And the only big acquisition they did was bring in Rudy Gobert. He, he's ass offensively. <laughs> Don't throw him the ball. <laughs> but what you pay him money for is to be good defensively. And he was. Yeah. Y'all want to do a next team? Let's go Warriors. Pelican. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you can take over. Uh, I did Andrew Wiggins. When Andrew Wiggins was playing at the all-star level that we saw, they went to the damn, they went to the NBA Finals and they won. Last year, he missed, what, 20? Not an all-star. <laughs> I'm just keeping it a buck. It a I'm just keeping later. it a buck, man. He had, he had the K-pop um, fans behind him. If you want to do something successfully, get the K-pop people behind mm -hmm. him. We want more money. Get K-pop to riot for us. What are barbs? Dude, that's what Anthony Alves was on. 
I love Nicki Minaj. We asked him, what's your favorite <laughs> Nicki song? He talking about, so, uh, oh, yeah, I put him <laughs> <in the spot. laughs> oh, my God, my bar melted. My X Factor for the Warriors is Jonathan Kaminga. I, I, I know what I'm getting from them other guys. I know Steph. I know Clay. I know what Wiggins going to do. Wiggins ain't having a bad year last year. He just no, wasn't he there. Missed, yeah. So, uh, Jonathan Kaminga, they need somebody off of their bench. They need a young guy to step up. Um, and even if they don't want to keep him, they need him to get some value to be able to move yeah. him. Because I feel like right now they're handicapped where they can't really move him. If they do, they're going to be getting nothing in return. Um, and because they don't have any size off the bench behind Kevon Looney, they're going to need somebody to come in and, and, and be able to do something in that front court. So, Jonathan Kamink is my X Factor. And I then, really like that one. Yeah. Huh? I, I like the X Factor. I didn't I did I had Chris Paul slash Andrew Wiggins because, you know, obviously they already Chris Paul is he just got there, Andrew Wiggins missed the time, but the whole season last year it felt like Golden State didn't have that bite in them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they can kind of get, help them get that back. And maybe that's you know, winning more games on the road and pulling some more games out, but they need that because I mean with Stephen Curry kind of dragged them to the second round, like as long as Steph Curry's playing like that, man, you got a chance. And I think it's great that one of the first things Draymond Green said about Chris Paul is that he feels like Chris Paul can unlock Kaminga to where he goes into the level that we see Kaminga can be. He says Chris Paul is probably the guy that can unlock it for him. So. That shit sound like they hell on defense. They need it, though. They I'm don't talking have... about for the niggas that's playing defense with them. That sound like screaming in your ear 24-7 with Chris Paul and uh, Two of the most Draymond. vocal asshole teammates in the history of ball. Jordan Poole is gone. You know they how many no 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 who take under. who taking it to the jaw this time over under how many times Draymond and CP get into it this season probably none no what, at know, least they, on they, camera one no one bro if it's it don't even gotta be hard like, it don't gotta be no KD like shit but yeah. if something happened oh, and they don't disagree they're or, going they, they're to, going yeah, to get into it on the point court five. Yeah. I'll I'll put one on it it might go one point five low key and I will still take the over eighty two game season I'm bro I might I'm plus playoffs three four times bro and they already don't like each other. Yeah, seriously. They, got, they now playing cool, cool now because they teammates, but let's th- not act like they always been that way. That's why that picture, bro, that picture's so funny of uh, Draymond and KD sitting next to each other. Because Draymond looked like he's trying to talk to him. Kevin Durant just looked like, bro, he, trying to, he just trying to mad his business. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris Paul being on the team is going to be money. It's going to be weird seeing him in a Warriors jersey. Yeah, but at this point, he's playing for every team anyway. Bench. Don't say that. We don't know what the hell that lineup going to look like yet. Hey, speaking of short kings real quick, I've seen this on Reddit. I want to see what y'all think. Now, think about this as like... My motherfucking arms hurt. I was lifting. Now, <laughs> which, which which player would gain the most adding three inches to their height? Isaiah Thomas. He was 5'9". You said six inches or three inches? Three inches. Okay. Oh, well, Even six inches, it would probably inches. be Isaiah Thomas. Three inches don't help Isaiah Thomas that much, actually. He's still short relative to the NBA. Would you give it to Steph? James Harden. If James Harden was 6'8". He was on some Paul George shit at that point. <laughs> oh, man. If James Harden was 6'8". Uh, adding three inches. Something if Russell like. you want to get the most advantage, you want to get just Westbrook a little bit of six, six, he'd be Michael Jordan. Derrick Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Derrick Rose. Uh, them knees are still giving out regardless of the height. He's still in the game. CJ McCollum. <laughs> CJ McCollum? He turned into T-Mac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who doesn't? Who can you take three inches away from and they still elite? Kevin, uh, Kevin Durant. You say LeBron? Is he the best of all time if he's six three five, inches t- shorter? Six, I don't know because he six, used six. so much of his body to do what he do. He would just be James Harden. Yeah, that's not best of all time. No, but he would have <laughs> LeBron's motor, attention to detail, focus. Attention attention to detail, three man, inches away show. from Kyrie, does he still do the, all the shit he does? Yeah, he's just probably not the better, as good of a finisher. Oh, you put three inches. I might make him be- a better. You put finisher. three inches on him. He's 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 this this whole conversation. We keep saying adding three inches to people of height, <laughs> of height, <laughs> okay. of height. You add three inches to Kyrie. I mean, this guy has five MVPs. <laughs> did, did y'all say uh, D book? D book. I feel like if you add three inches to D book, that's make that's. Him. He's Kevin Durant. So he Durant. goes from what six six to six nine. He's Kevin so he's Durant. like Kevin KD type. Fight. He's Kevin Durant. Three inches could do a lot. <laughs> I think that trust. Could do I know. A lot, yeah. He don't. Uh, he's a guy that don't really need the three inches though. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Can we transition away from this? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is crazy. He don't. His game is just like the context man. of the conversation makes sense to what we're saying. Yeah, but like out of context, which is what clips does. These. This is about what to if be you take crazy. Three inches away from Giannis. 
Now that's a conversation. He works at Kroger. <laughs> Whoa. Bro, I love I love the meme where it's all it's Drewski walking into that like that fast food shit and he getting ready to work. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love Giannis. He would still be great. I I'm just playing to If you take three inches from stuff. He still he's that all, shot not going nowhere. But it's he hard to get, get off. It's hard to get off. Shorter. He might take more. <laughs> yeah, he ends up on. Oh no, he ends up on Milwaukee. He's Seth. He's Seth Curry. Oh, Seth. <laughs> oh shit! What if we get Zion three inch? Oh, it's over. Oh the shit! Yeah, no, that's the answer. That's the answer. Yeah, he goes from six six to six nine. I was about, I was about to say something crazy. He's fucking say. Sean Kemp. The <laughs> fuck? Sean Sean Kemp was great before the stuff. Yeah, but with Sean Kemp, uh, no, MVP? no, hell no. Curry Zion is better than Sean Kemp at his prime. No, he's better than Sean Kemp right now with six six. He is. You disrespectful as hell. Has I, actually, I, has he ever I don't want to be on Sean Kemp's bad side at all, actually. This is the <laughs> <fucking> Zion <laughs> at the one year. Oh, he had two years. Can we go to the Pelicans? Two years. Before we go to the Pelicans, let's just remember who the fuck we talking about with Sean Kemp. I, I know Sean Kemp, Rain Man. I know who he is. But Zion is literally, at, at his peak, a top 10 player in basketball. Like, do not forget... He is averaging 27 on 70% shooting. Sean Kemp is six, giving six. you 18 and 11. Yawn at that shit. No, because the, no, it's I understand. two different games. It's two Come different on games. Two it, different was, games. it really was. We just had Yon, this conversation. Yawn at it compared to what Zion is doing. What is Zion doing? He averaging 28. How old, when, uh, do you, how old was Sean Kemp when he was in the finals? Uh, Sean Kemp. He I, was I know Z has not played in a long time. He was 23. But I we, he was a little bit young, but I would say he was doing his shit. When we take Z to be that young. at his face value, Z is a top 10 player in ball. You give him the basketball and you're he's sorry, a guaranteed wait, let bucket. Let him shoot the ball. When he misses, he's getting his own rebound and going right back up. He is forced at 6'6". Six, six. Give him three more inches. He's, 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 he's 30 plus a game. He's Giannis. No, but if that's the case, then why you say that shit to Derrick or Derrick Rose needs? I'm still taking all the shit with Zion into consideration. Sure, I mean you know, he ain't healthy all of a sudden. That's so he's, just a ta- <laughs> he's a taller motherfucking motherfucker sure. we want to see on the court more. I, I okay, yeah, you got me down. But we talking at the actual value of who yeah, he Mike, is? They made 95, 96. He was way older than twenty six. I mean twenty three. Oh, I swear because I I watched that finals like when I was going back and he, he was twenty six. He was twenty six. He looked young. He was I swear that. But they might have had him at the two, five, three, two. four, five. He's a six-time All Star, and yeah, his numbers ain't gonna look the same because it's a different game. They, mm-hmm. We just talked about it when he was going in. Yeah, he had to go through fucking Hakeem and and big niggas. He, he ain't going through too. fucking uh fucking. Oh, fuck, got guard, guard Jordan at the rim. <laughs> Don't matter. Zion going against Jackson Hayes in practice. What the what? Not no more. <laughs> Come on, man. I, 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 I you know I that man was you, doing the Jackson Hayes in practice. I think you forgetting him. You forgetting him. I know he ain't played, but that's, no, I'm aware. But okay. I'm just saying, at some point, motherfuckers got to do something in the NBA, and it can't be potential. That's he, what I'm he going was off. Two of. votes away from All NBA. Yeah, he was. That's so at this point. That's not just potential. That's production. So at this point, we should have seen him All NBA by now, right? He can't get out of his own head. So if he can't get out of his own head, you know what he's If he can't get out of his own head, then he's just gonna be a motherfucker that we talking about. Did you, if, did you see if, those if, pictures if, from two days ago? I did I see them, and them motherfuckers looked hard. They look yeah. crazy. <laughs> I'm just if we could get you seen Ben this, Simmons pictures. Good point. Don't I don't think it matters. The pictures don't matter. That's the but point. Zion did look. I'm just saying if we could get this is hypothetical because we don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. If we could get two healthy seasons of Zion, brothers making all NBA both of them. I'm seasons. with you, but I'm just saying. <laughs> If we could do if if Michael Beasley didn't get drafted by Miami and he was just played his whole career in Minnesota, we probably talk about Michael Beasley different. If Derrick Rose ain't fucking if if Tom Thibodeau took him out of the game against Philly when they had already won, we probably be talking about a lot of different shit. We could put if on a lot of motherfuckers. Yes, we could. So Zion Williamson again, he's he's a ways away from if though. He he no uh, I don't know man. He's 23. He's, he's played 30% of his game. He's but he's a, also 23. He's a, but the reason I'm saying if is because I feel like this shit is kind of – we're getting Kawhi Leonard levels with him at 23 already. But it's not – that's not abnormal. Joel Embiid played 30% of his games till he was 25. And now he's the MVP of the fucking league. But I never looked at his shit as like as Zion. Zion's Joel Embiid's injuries are worse than what Zion went through. That's my point. 
He not going through shit. We still don't see the nigga but play. No, my point. My point is that he can easily come back. Then why don't that. he? He is. You see him in the gym, like you want him to play right now, motherfucker. I want him to play in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, you do got to give him some time. Yeah, but you cannot hoop right now, bro. One of the reports this offseason was that the nigga could have played last year, and they, the whole team was pissed at him. But and that's Brandon okay. Ingram. The so same, it's like, the that's same the Kawhi shit. shit, right? But the same shit happened at twenty three. The same shit happened with Jamal Murray last year. Correct? He was eligible to play in the playoffs, but he didn't feel comfortable enough to play. He, he came had, back he this had year. A horrific injury. I, I'm just, but I'm just saying he was eligible to play. That's the only point I'm but making. He had a horrific injury. I like when they go Zion back can't before. keep his dick in his pants. It's he, the same thing. <laughs> he had a horrific. Jamal Murray. <laughs> Jamal Murray came Jamal back. Jamal Murray didn't either. Was this? <laughs> <laughs> Boys in a bubble caused the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> CJ McCullough facial hair. Oh, man. Looking like you did. Oh, yeah. CJ said that boy, that boy Harry. All you see is all that shit going on. And you see who was it? Rashawn Holmes that was trying to get some food. <laughs> <laughs> Rashawn Holmes left, lost his fucking starter spot because he was hungry. My point is, Jamal Murray taking a little bit more time pre- being precautious would stem from a horrific injury, which is what usually happens. Guys who have those horrific injuries, ACL, Achilles, they're going to take the full length time. What was even Zion's injury? This shit was so minuscule, I can't fucking remember. Yeah, it went from like he'll be back in a couple weeks to he's not so, playing yeah, this season. He, that was actually kind of crazy. I feel crazy. like that's a reoccurring thing with him too, because but that's also like knee and foot injury problems. I think it was a hamstring injury. If I'm and while and I'll say this. I am with you. When he plays. It's not a lot of people better than him. We fuck with it. But the point is, if you barely play, then it's just like, at 23, by the way, and I understand, Joel and B, for sure. And like you said, Joel and B had way worse injuries. That's just my point. For a dude to be like, two weeks, turn into the whole season, I'm like, hold up, what the fuck is this? What is this? The what is going on? is happening in the new world is according to um, CJ McCollum. Same thing with Brandon Ingram. Like Brandon they thought Ingram. He was eligible to play. He just didn't want to. I, it's something in the water over there. No. A lot of good food. I mean, I think that's my a, biggest X factor for them was Zion's health. That that was number one. I put I uh, had Zion and Dyson Daniels. Yeah, I put Dyson Daniels slash just the younger guys, even EJ Liddell, who's gonna like you know he's gonna come back. What oh, yeah, he tore his, What college he went to? He Indy. went to um, Ohio State. There you go. Oh, I said Indy. Damn, I knew it was one of the the Big Ten <laughs> schools. But I feels like the Pelicans have done a good job of just like home grooming some type of talent they have, whether it be like Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, or anything like that. And so you bring in some other players, you know, some maybe even like Jordan Hawkins or something. I think you need another little bright spot just to add to that depth. I forgot they had EJ Liddell stash because he tore his ACL before the season started. Yeah. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see him slide in that too. Trey Murphy was my X factor. For Trey real? Murphy? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because him hitting that next jump is super important to what they want to do. Because mm-hmm. they were a team that was like, we're going we gonna to stand on our – we're going to pat our water down. We could be in these rumors for trade and B.I. Or, or Z. But the way Trey plays and the way people talk about the way Trey plays, it makes me think that obviously that next jump is coming. And that just opens the game up so much more to like what the hell does their lineups look like when it matters the most? Because Trey is valuable. Brandon is valuable. Z is valuable. All three of those players on the court together. Now you may be losing a little bit, you know what I'm saying, just because you don't have another bigger body. You got Z at 6'6", and then Brandon Negram at 130 pounds. So it's like, how, how do we fit all of these players together? Because all of them are warranted big minutes and big That's closeout say, moments. Dyson Dane. If Dyson Daniels take a step. Did he play summer league this year? I don't think he didn't play summer league. I don't, league. I don't remember I don't seeing remember him. Seeing remember. Him play. I, got, I got a quick quiz. You have him at point guard at six 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 seven. Brand, uh, Brandon Murphy, Ingram at the Brandon two. <laughs> we forget that you got Herb Jones. Too. And you also I forget that CJ McCollum's on the yeah. roster. Oh, I oh yeah. <laughs> Dyson Daniels take a step. Oh man. <laughs> I was like, I was dead ass. I was thinking that too because I feel like CJ cool, but I feel like he he's replaceable on this team. C- CJ in a first for James. Call him to the league office right now. I like CJ as shooting guard. Yeah, but you know what? He he did okay as the. He was a solid one. Guy. He did, yeah. but it just made it felt like his. Uh, they shooting, feel like a by committee playmaking. His team. shooting took a hit. Oh, his yeah. scoring and shooting. So I want to see him get back to focusing on that. CJ got, got quiz, game. Y'all. Yes, he, he does. does. CJ got G. CJ need to be on the fucking Kings. Did so y'all? <laughs> yeah, on the Kings. Did y'all see that? They got Malik Monk. Same boy, player. boy, he have, he had give Malik Monk that shit. Did y'all see the way they announced their um, what? what? I don't know about all that. Bro, on a one on one, one on one, Malik Muck is one of them type of players we talk about. He might exactly. not be no all star, okay. nothing, but he gonna get down on that. And a one on one, they're gonna have a, they're gonna it's have gonna be no, yeah, it's gonna be one on one. But I'm talking about, but, I'm, I'm, but 
It's going to be entertaining, but I'm still taking C.J. McCollum. I thought y'all just meant ball player for ball player. Me too, it's, it's no, CJ. no, I'm just talking about one on one. But one on one, I'm still taking C.J. But I'm I'm not saying he on. When did it ball become ball. a one on one conversation? Okay, that's <laughs> not, well, you know that's what Mike is. Mike is a Hooper Hooper type dude. So he everything is <laughs> but a one on one. But C.J. McCollum is a Hooper too. So I, I'm just putting a that's what I'm saying. He would still win, but I don't want to disrespect Malik Monk like he's gonna beat him eleven to zero. No, but he's still gonna I'm fuck just him up for a little respect on Malik Monk name. That's what I'm. You guess. brought him up. So if you had if you were the Kings and they said we'll give you CJ for Malik Monk, you're saying mm, I don't know about that. That shit not taking them over the top. You might as well keep Malik Monk on his contract. You have a oh, and this world the contracts don't matter. CJ's making thirty million. <laughs> Malik Monk's making eight. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm fuck, the contract. fuck the contract. <laughs> you, you always upgrade. You go get CJ. Oh, okay. <laughs> he also said he wouldn't trade Jalen Brown for Desmond Bain. He sure did. Well, say why that. the hell is he laughing like that over there? That nigga don't even know who CJ McCollum is. <laughs> <laughs> what team CJ, CJ play if, for? If Drake wears jersey, he gonna know what the fuck. Right. He gonna know what right. college he went to. He talking about Toronto. That, that kitty, though, that's a lie. <laughs> oh. I got a quick quiz. I just though. had to make sure you said you was gonna get CJ McCullough. That's all I wanted to make sure. Did y'all see how they announced their season or their uh, re- uh, schedule this year? You know, everybody dropped like a cool video mm-hmm. or whatever. Nah. Um, I just saw the Mavericks one. They went. You know how people say that CJ looks like Steve Urkel? Yes. Yeah. They had Steve Urkel come in and play CJ McCullough. <laughs> oh, okay. That shit that shit was funny as hell, bro. Nah, nah, when nah, they I brought LeBron out, where like they brought the kid that does that LeBron James. Oh, yeah, they, had, yeah. they had him come announce and LeBron in the starting line. Yeah, yeah. The Lakers didn't drop a video this year. They were one of the three teams that did not drop a video. Y'all you know, just too fucking Hollywood. You know what I've they been seeing? They also preparing for a hurricane right now. You know what I've been seeing? What's the that? local high schools, they're they're doing like their photo shoots for the football year. I saw some and of those. They, too. they, they, they going crazy. Yeah, they going crazy. I'm yeah. like, damn, high school is crazy now. Yeah. I just seen they had uh, one football stadium. It's called some shit. It's a high school football stadium. They said that shit cost like 15 mil. Is it in Texas? It has yeah, to it was in Texas. Te- yeah. Texas yeah. high school football is a whole like different level. Uh, NFL stadium. Yeah, they had like a crazy gym, like a workout facility too. It was like big as hell. That was the same school? Yeah. 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 Oh, because that's 15 mil. That. You got to have a state of the art uh, gym. Yeah. There's four players that played more games than Zion and Brandon Ingram combined last season. Who were they on that Pelicans team? Say, say that one more time for me. Four players played more games combined than Brandon Ingram and Zion. Herb Jones. Jones. Herb Jones is on here. Valanciunas is one. Trey? No. So we got two? Two more. Two or four? Yeah. You got Oh, Valanchunas Larry Nance. Herb Jones. Larry Nance and I made. I think he was like one game shy. Damn. Or maybe he might even tie it. Uh, two other players. One is a starter. CJ? CJ. Also, this dude is not a starter, but he does his shit on the court, what they need him to do. It, Jose missed hella time. It's not Jose, right? Mm, the wing. Oh, uh, Najee Marshall. Najee Marshall. Uh, oh. Najee Marshall had a, like a month run where he was average like So 18. you can look at it in a positive like, way that they kind of finished kind of where they did, which is right outside the playoffs with Brandon Ingram and Zion missing that so much time and the Iron guys kind of being No, because I'm going back to the conversation. If them dudes could have <laughs> played, play him. Because Brandon Ingram ain't had no fucking ACL Achilles injury. Yeah, like he turf always toe. got the lingering injury. Neither did Zion Williams. How's he looking, like, FIBA? That's one guy I'm not even thinking about when I watch FIBA. Who? He's supposed to be the one having Brandon Ingram. Supposed to be the best player. Scoring 21. <laughs> Is he supposed to be the best player? He's supposed to be like I think he's like he's the vet. Age, the ve- age. That must be like vet. Our, our age. I'm talking about the vet. <laughs> but they Bobby Portis is the vet. The vet. True. He the champion. He and he's thirty he plus. Is. Yeah, he'll just say champion too. Yeah. Um, next team is let's say Clippers. Uh, for me, I said Frank Vogel. Uh, he's got a lot to deal with over there. How <laughs> how how is Frank Vogel gonna be the X factor? Yeah, what are you gonna do? I think coaching with that team, with all those big names, is takes a lot. It takes very good coaching to make all that cohesiveness work. You think he's going to start Russell Westbrook? No. Wait, what are y'all talking about? We said the Clippers. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought y'all said the Suns. My bad. <laughs> we about to let him talk it through. First, I thought he was going to be you, like, no, nah, I don't know. When you start Russell Westbrook, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, for the Bro, the, for Clippers, the Clippers, I, I said Russ. I actually had Russ Don't and put Russ on there, bro. I had health, and I got Norman Powell. Health and Norman I'm Powell. I'm fine with Norman Powell. Don't put Russ on there, man. Don't put Russ this on there. This is a team that's like, who are we kidding, bro? It's the two dudes up top. Yes. They got to be healthy. Tyron Luce in the interview, he talked to them about taking the regular season more serious, so we'll see what that does. But I'm not putting Russell. Russell Westbrook going to come with the come. So I mean, who going to come with <laughs> Come with what now? Y'all crazy. <laughs> gonna, I just been saying he's gonna ego. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, 
Bro, this got to be the most unhinged through the wire <laughs> episode. He's going to come bro. with it. He's going to come oh, with I it. I don't know why I sure. said exactly come will. twice. He's going to come with games. it. Well, 75 at least. <laughs> Selfishly, I just want to watch a full season of Kawhi Leonard. That's all. It's hell yeah. yeah. That's all I want. Well, I think we were watching those defensive play of the year highlights at the wedding, and yeah. I was just like, man, if he could ha- if he could duplicate this in any form, it would be crazy to see. You also have to remember that this is supposed to be – remember when they was talking about he was oh, the best player in the world? Yeah. Yeah. He got to win the MVP or be in the conversation. Yeah. He he finished yeah. third that one it's year. It's going to be hard now. I think James – 65 games. The James Harden year, he finished third. So it was James, Russ, him? Yeah, I think so. Um, Rightfully so. So he's been close, but never there. Uh, I just, yeah, I just like to see him how motherfuckers. That's all I'm really here for. Yeah. I got Norman Powell though, just because I think uh, this team has always been lethal potentially because of the the depth. So to be able to have somebody like Norman Powell come off your bench, I think he's good with the catch and shoot. He gives them a chance to run big, run small. He could play with Russ. So, bro, you know what else? For your health, I was looking at and maybe. It's going to be a whole different story on the court because I'm just looking at the stats because I didn't really pay attention to much to Marcus Morris last season. But do y'all remember when he was getting like a bunch of wave and just like people was talking shit about him? Like yes. why just yeah. play and everything? I was looking, I was just looking at the stats. They didn't even look that bad. He was averaging like 11 points shooting like them there. I think the Clipper fans don't like him because of the type of shots he takes. He be knocking them down sometimes. But a lot like of times he do be missing. Yeah. He's shooting. That's, the, that's what comes yeah. with really like when no, you can make hard shots. It's just when you miss them, they look kind of bad. And he's not passing. Well, <laughs> yeah. I fuck with Marcus Morris. His best year was with the Knicks. He was. The half, the half a season before he Almost got traded. Almost an all-star. Um, OKC Thunder. I put I Chet think. Holmgren. Chet. That, they were a team last year who didn't have a center. And I'm, it's very it's going to be very fun and interesting to see them play with a true center now. I put Lou Dort. Lou. I'm very surprised at that for what reason. I just feel like he. Perimeter defense. Who yeah. else is a perimeter defender? Yeah, it's just got to be Jalen Williams. No, yeah, that yeah. one a unit. Yeah. So yeah, Shea, cool. Shea's not terrible either. He just overtax offensively, so he kind of because I expect lollygags. what I'm getting from Giddy, Shea, and even Chad, and Jalen Williams. So it's like the X factor. If Lou Dor had an amazing year, that would yeah. put them way over the top. Yeah, I, w- I went with uh, I went with Josh Giddy. Big, oh, big gear, big gear. because every you, single year he, so far, I mean, it's only been two seasons. Um, he's, he's taking a, he's taking a step right when it's when it comes <clears> to a shooting. And this is a team that I won't say lack shooting because they have, like I said, Joe. They got they got plus three point shooters, but as far as their start, potential starting lineup, it's not a ton of like guys mm-hmm. that can shoot. And he doesn't get guarded. He has the one of the best open rates yep. in all of basketball. Yep. <laughs> so if he can start say. making them pay a little bit more, that's huge for what their offense can be. And it's gonna open up so much for him too. I like you know. the chat pick though because they, they were really good people, defensively without him last year. It's very few yeah. people in the league. I felt like Lonzo was the same way, where it's just like when they're attacking, you know, they're most likely looking to pass the ball. Yeah. yeah, and they were a team that last year rebounded by committee. Now they have a solid seven footer who can actually rebound the ball for them. So Lonzo Ball, what a name! And I also, I mean, it, it sucks that he misses. I heard he season. got an interview coming soon with Trey Young. I saw that. Oh, oh yeah, straight shot it up. He and Lonzo might, they be doing interviews. Too. Yeah, but. Have you? When was the last time y'all rewatched Lonzo Ball Bulls defensive highlights? I haven't. Yesterday for me. I can't watch this. Yesterday, him and Caruso on the court together was mayhem. I know. And it was forty-two games, and I took it all for granted. Terrible fan of me. I'm just. Ter- I just thought it was gonna last forever, and we may never see it again. What would y'all say is the next step for this team to be like this season with a dub? Who? The OKC Thunder. It's hard to say because last year they finished 40 and 42, I think. Yeah. I think they want to say, hey, we're a playoff team now. We were right there in the play in last year. I think that's their next step. So, like, 8th, 7th seed area? Y'all think they could be in that area? I just think. making I, it, whether you play in or yeah, whatever, just making it. They have the potential to be better, in my opinion. Were they a playing team last year? Yep. Yeah. Just yeah. lost it. Um, but I don't know. Because I've been hearing people make, like, crazy predictions. I think people are trying to, like, ride the timeline a little bit too fast, I want to say. Uh, but they're like, oh, they're guaranteed to be a top six seed. Like the West is so crazy that mm-hmm. no, no, That's no funny. team is guaranteed to do shit right now. Yeah, and you're like that middle of the pack team. I think that should be. You want to obviously overreach, but the goal should be like, man, we can get that top six. At least get out of the plan. I think they're a team that can come out and have a start similar to like what the Jazz did. They could just come out just hot, having fun. One of those young teams that just surprised. and then they like one of those top five seeds like the Jazz was. I think that could be something that they could do. They definitely could. I'm gonna yeah. look at their schedule. Um, to start the season, I know they they got a game against the Bulls very early on. Our home opener against is against them. Ooh. Oh, so that's their first game. So they start off the season here in Chicago, then they go to Cleveland, 
then Denver, Detroit, New Orleans, Golden State. Damn, Atlanta, half Cleveland. Those, yeah. Damn. Half those games sound like – Tough to start of the season. Yeah, it is. Definitely a tough start. Is there a start of the season when we are going to be – when um that Denver trip? Is that the same – is that the 30 whatever? Is that when we will be on our road trip? Uh, actually, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Because I was thinking, like, I might go to that game. Um, the Denver Nuggets home home opener is against the Lakers. So that would be the one we're at at, at the 24th, right? Usually yeah. take us to the ring ceremony. Yeah. Um, and they play again on Friday. I just don't think – oh, that's away. I have, I have no idea what this trip is going to look like for us mm. this time around. Because last year we did the road trip, and I just – There's nothing where the road trip from. Yeah, it's just not – I wouldn't even want a road trip again. <laughs> That's to like Vegas or some shit. Yeah, like Vegas just, don't even have like another team. Yeah, no, no it's just too much. Yeah. It was fun. Very fun. I mean, I would do it again, but not from Denver to Utah or some shit like that. Yeah, the SoCal one was fire. Facts. Um, What's the next team? Uh, King of the Suns. Since you were sure. talking about, yeah, let's get the Suns out of the way. Suns, okay. Um, yeah, I had said Frank Vogel. Yeah, now I, we get I was right. <laughs> I, I put down Frank Vogel too. Um, I think that his. You know, obviously, I think, like, part of his priority should be getting, like, what rotations work, you know, with all these guys. Obviously, you're going to have to fit, like, give 30-plus minutes a, a game to, like, the top guys. But I think that in between is where you're going to find, like, the little niches at. Yeah, he has a lot to jiggle with because they, they had offseason where they did go out and get good quality players to fill out this roster. But just on paper, it looks good, but you got to make it work on the court, and that's his job. And also, he he's, he's prioritizing unlocking Aiden. He says Aiden could be a very big, intricate part of this team. And if he feels like he could do it, similar to what he Yo, did with like Roy a, Hibbert and shit, I think he could do I, it. I saved this clip, too. It was a clip of DeAndre Aiden. He was playing FIBA. And he caught the ball right underneath the basket wide open. And he pumped it like three times, and then he dunked it. It was like classic Aiden back. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that fifth starter is, well, the guy that's going to be closing out the games because he's going to get so many open looks. You just got to yeah, hit him. My X Factor, Eric Boy, Craig. Where oh. Josh Akogi? Tori Tori Craig plays for what team? The Suns. Oh, okay. Are you sure about that? He plays for the Bulls. The last thing I was looking at said Tori Craig was still on. He there. signed with the Bulls. Yeah, he signed with the Bulls and Ridge. He's Josh Chicago, Akogi. baby. <laughs> Fuck. I got Eric Gordon. Gordon. Eric Gordon gonna come off the bench. They're gonna need some off the bench. He can make some shots with those guys. Yeah, I mean he just got so much star power. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Aiden. It's tough to find the X Factor. So give yeah. me Eric Gordon. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be one. You, we got all those stars. You need that coach that's going to bring it all together. Yeah. Uh, next team, uh, let's go to the Dallas Mavericks. Did we hit them yet? Nope. No. Dallas Mavericks. Josh Green, man. Gotta Josh be. Green. It's got to be Josh Green. Josh Green. Got to be that, that connector piece who could do a lot of different things. If they, the same. So if it's Josh Green starting, they got Kyrie, Luka, Josh Green, Green Grant, Grant Williams, Williams. Yeah, and Grant Williams is my Rashad expected. Holmes, Dwight Powell, whoever. But it fuck. don't sound pretty, but it can get it done. It's going to get it done. It's going to get it done. It's gonna, it don't sound Seth pretty. Seth Curry off that bench. Maxi nice. Kleber still there. Tim Hardaway Jr. It's going to be a good team. I hope. Yeah. And they it's have based the, off Luke. They got the ability to go small. Eric Lively, O Max. This team is going to be nice. Put Maxi at the five, Grant Williams at the four. I get what you're saying, though, Mike. It's not. It's, it's not, not pretty at all. Pretty. Like, if you yeah. see, if you like. Put this team on 2K and you look, they'd be like, uh, kind of like, the top two look fantabulous. And to, it's fantabulous. But, uh, the first is on 2K. <laughs> look down to Kyrie. I just said, you come, just, come, Mike, so. just, Mike just made a new word. Hey, fantabulous. Um, <laughs> that word has definitely been used before. And, and by you. And 2K, it goes like 96 overall Luka, 90 overall Kyrie, 77 overall Grant Williams. <laughs> like, that's, that's the drop off with their depth as far as star power to role play. Hey, Grant Williams gonna get out, get out up to an 80 this season. I think so too. Yeah. He's gonna be used way more than just a catch and shoot guy. He should he should at least yeah. be better this year compared to the off the bench. Yeah. He can dribble handoffs. You don't really see him handle the ball. Go in the Draymond role. I guess so. Hey. Ask him. He ain't hey, no, he can't do it. We saw this man. What did he hit like six three throws when he needed the playoffs one time? He hit seven threes. Seven, yeah. Seven threes in a game seven, baby. Grant Williams can he do it. He is going to trash talk one thing about Grant Williams. Yep. It might not work well, but he's going to do hey, it. Talk. He, he, he a dude that's going to make both of them. <laughs> yeah, he's going to make both of them. What did he say to Jimmy again, bro? What did he say to Jimmy? That like Jimmy was like, and that's when Jimmy oh, went on that stretch. Oh, that's when Jimmy went crazy? Yeah. He said something like, uh, I'm coming too. I'm coming with it too. Or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, he got in his face, but like, I'm here or some shit. He was that's not all there. it takes. He was not there. <laughs> uh, Utah Jazz. But, uh, I put um, Keontae George. Are y'all excited for the Utah Jazz yeah. this year? Yeah. I think Keontae George is the guy that makes me excited to watch them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kyle, 
Colin Sexton and THT. I, I put just point guard spot. Obviously, Mike Conley, I felt like he's one of the big reasons that they started off so hot. They don't really got no true point guard. You yeah. run THT, Colin Sexton, Chris Dunn. For the people that are Chris Dunn fans. That Did Chris Dunn get re-signed? Yes. Okay, great. 14, Shout 5, Chris, and 6. Chris Dunn. You know, he 50, was, hey. Doing he looked like shit. an NBA player. I mean, that game. was last 10 yeah. games. Like an NBA player game. But yeah, having a true point guard, I feel like, because you just have so many weapons, having somebody that can spread the ball around, definitely going to help. Am I rooting for Chris Dunn? Damn. Why not? Why would you root against him? Not, no, I don't think those, I don't <laughs> think this one fi- or the other. Finding a, root, finding a reason to root for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not like I either root for you or I don't. It's like, oh, I root for you or I root against you. Sometimes I just a neutral towards a player. Yeah. Him and Dennis Smith Jr. had a big resurgence last year. I'm kind of rooting for him and Dante X. All of the dudes that fell out of the league and getting another chance. I want to see them be successful. Dennis Smith Jr. another one of those type of guys. Yeah. Um, I can't say, though, that I'm super excited for Utah Jazz basketball. I'm interested, I hope see how, that I'm interested to see how that John Collins stuff works out. The yeah, they just have it. that log jam at that front course. By yeah, can he lot. possibly be the X factor? I feel like for sure. It's just Utah feels so free. It feels like they don't really put pressure on themselves at all. They're just going out there. It feels like a college team. Yeah, it's gonna be such a big ass starting lineup. Yeah. Laurie at the three, John Collins at the four, Walker Kessler at the five. You know, Jalen on love that. But they also up. gonna have a coach. <laughs> <laughs> 98% of people have no idea what they you're talking don't, about. They don't, but for the 2%, they're going to think that shit hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, they can do a lot of different things, man. Our next team, the uh, uh, the Blazers. Derek, who's y'all X Factor right now? I just said Shane it's Sharp the, making a jump. It's the hardest fucking one. Because yeah. it, it, it's not a lot really going on there except for Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. We don't really know what's going on with his situation. They also saying they don't want to trade him to Miami. Did you did you see his song or album? What did he drop? I didn't weekend? listen to it, actually. Good answer. Dame. He's a solid rapper, but he's not a rapper that I'm sitting down Bro, listening to. The, we hey. talked about a song name that he had yesterday, and it couldn't be more like any more Damian Lillard. It was called Loyal to the Soil. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I've heard that song before. No, he asked me, if you know somebody with a song named Loyal to the Soil, who would it be? And I was like, is it just a rapper? He said, yeah, but he do something else. I was like, oh, that's a Damian Lillard song. <laughs> <laughs> <Easy>. <laughs> <laughs> um, did y'all? They released their schedule video. Like here, the you know games that we play. I was like, are they gonna put Dame in the video? He's in the video. Oh, okay. For like two seconds, but he's in the video. So that means they plan on him being there. So. That's exactly what I said in my video. <laughs> when I was watching. Oh, that means he's saying because James Harden was not in the seventy six er one. They had everybody else, no James Harden. So that means Scoot's not starting. Uh, Scoot was Scoot in it. Scoot wasn't in it. Because no, no. I know what you mean. I yeah, know what you asked. Like in the starting lineup. Scoot wasn't in it because they were using clips from last year. Oh, last yeah. year. Um, I put. Uh, but no, I mean. Grant Williams was in the Dallas Mavericks one. Yeah. So I wonder how they didn't get scooted in that one. No, no, no. It's just it's based on teams. It's based on individual teams. Everybody did something differently. Oh. Okay. So yeah, the, the Blazers just like, you know, we're just gonna use footage from last year and scoots oh, okay. just not there. Grant Williams was what, golfing? In, yeah, he in was. The Mavs one. They had a pretty fun one too. But yeah, Mavs was just Shane Sharp making a jump. Yeah. Let me see where mine was. I, I it was put so the, peculiar, I can't remember. I put the front office and that's just cause literally is they I figure you got to do some shit with him, Matisse. whether you keep him or not. But <laughs> Matisse, Matisse didn't even want to be there. He wanted to exactly. go to Dallas. <laughs> I was looking at the roster. I'm older than 14 people on this team. <laughs> and like That's four crazy. or five, but like five years. So, who, like, so who are you? It's uh, Jeremy Grant. Shane Sharp. Jeremy Grant. Nurkic. Nurkic. Oh, who he's not older Dame. than? He's not oh. older than Dame. That's probably it, right? Who else on that roster that's per- older? It was one person. I think it was Matisse Stiebel. He's like 26. I'm like Matisse Stiebel is a sneaky older he's guy. He's 26. Yeah, he's like on that Terrence man. man shit. But other than that, you see a bunch of 19 year olds, 20 year olds, and like very early 20s. Man, like this team looks really good for a rebuild. It's just Damian Lillard's there, and you don't know if he's gonna literally be there for like a full rebuild or something like that, or you're just gonna move him. So I put it on the front office. What's the center name on their team with the long neck? John. Oh, John Butler. Oh, uh, John Butler. John but he's Butler. actually not a center. Oh. He's a power forward. <laughs> All right, he's the X Factor. Fuck it. Just pick somebody <laughs> on the roster. Uh, Rockets. It's E May for me. Yeah, that's come on. great minds think a lot, but yes. E May too. <laughs> it gotta be E May. Change the culture. Yeah. Good coach. I mean, he has a small resume. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One season resume good, as a head a coach. Yeah. I put KPJ, but I like I like e. KPJ is a good one too. I put Jalen Green. Mm. The, um, the jump coming. Yeah, because obviously the roster looks a little bit more evened out now. I just felt like this is one of them times. It's like. You know, a couple of years you you goof off or whatever because your teacher don't kind of know what you're doing or you're just like the class not organized. But now this teacher's coming in, it's like you're still the best person on the team technically. So it's time for you to kind of like 
button up your shirt straight and, and come with it this year. Yeah. Like this is the time for him to have that leap. He may gonna bring in that stability and that that leadership into that locker room. Yeah, it's not probably not name everybody on the roster as the X factor this team. Yeah, no more AAU ball. No more AAU ball, man. Because he may he, he said I ain't come here to rebuild. He said he came here to win. So that's, that's just he also good. he also told <laughs> them don't sign James Harden. So allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Um, to the Kings. I put Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray, baby. That year Haven't two. Heard her. A, a lot of teams they know about you now in that year two. When you at the top of the scouting report, what you gonna do? He's that's not. He's feel, not gonna be at the top though. That's how I feel about Kevin Herter. Like he had such a good year last year mm-hmm. that I'm like, can he do it again? That's right. I put for mine like growth because it's just too hard to ask everybody to replicate what they did last season. But I feel like they were right there, and for a team that was like so good at closing out games. Against the Warriors specifically, and give the Warriors credit, but they had a lot of times where I feel like they just turned the ball over. They had a bad shot. Like I feel like that just comes with a little bit more season. I feel like just another year or two. So yeah, it was their first not, taste of success. Yeah, this is like one of the teams where you definitely don't you know mind that, that run it back type method. So I just put growth for it. Yeah, they were the healthiest team in basketball last year. That's what scares me about them. It, it feels true. It, That's very true. It feels kind of like can you replicate that level of health? You know, Sabonis did break his hand, but he played he played through a broken hand for half the season. De'Aaron Fox was Man, healthy. Everybody real. was healthy. Their whole star lineup. Sabonis played very good for a guy who was playing with a broken hand. Exactly. So, so I'm, I'm a little bit afraid for them for that reason alone. The talent is there. Keegan Murray in that one summer league game looked like baby Jesus. So, you know, <laughs> I picked him as the X Factor as well because they brought back the same team. And I don't really expect a lot of players to be better. Chris Middleton as boy. For real. Um, he's one of those dudes because of his younger age that he can definitely get better with his old ass. Uh, Grizzlies. I put Jaron Jackson Jr. just because they will go 25 games without John Morant. So a lot is going to be on his shoulders for those first 25 games in order to keep them afloat. And it's pretty much they need him to play at all-star level in order for them to stay afloat during those 25 games. Because they get behind in the West, Jaw like, come back. Like it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard climb uphill. It's a good answer. Are y'all a part of the Jaron Jackson Jr. fan club? I was about I'm to like, ask you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jaron. I remember last season you kept telling me he was like, he was like, I, I didn't know how good Jaron Jackson Jr. like was offensively or something. I remember you telling me that, mm-hmm. and I was thinking because I put him, I put him there too for my X Factor. The first game against the Lakers, that motherfucker was unstoppable. Yeah. yeah, it didn't matter who was. After that, it was a little bit of a question, but if they can consistently get that Triple J, who's like a monster on the block and do all those little things. They offense is gonna be ridiculous. Like, yeah, last year the offense took a huge jump. The year, my, yeah, the years before they were just kind of shooting threes. My X factors are ever gonna play the wing. I don't know who's gonna be. It's the not wing. a lot. They don't have a lot of options. Yeah. <laughs> they got Zaire have a lot of Williams, Zaire. David Roddy, Luke Kennard, John uh, John Conchar. Yeah, and they're, they're John Conchar and Luke Kennard are smaller for a wing at six five each. Oh, um, man. But Jaron Jackson Jr. I, I could I could talk about Jaron for twenty minutes. I think. About yeah, how we know his daddy. Let's call him. Yeah, let's call him. Pop. <laughs> He'll actually talk for twenty minutes. He for said us. He liked Tim, Tim Duncan, Duncan with a jump. Tim Duncan with a jump. And shot. guess what? Pops ain't live. All right, <laughs> pops, pops laugh. Pops, pops laugh. laugh. Sorry, okay. Pops, pops laugh. laugh. But but he that motherfucker is, is pretty good. Fucking great. That's what he is. <laughs> um, last team, I think, the Nugs, the defending champions. Ha, what's the X factor for the Nuggets? Christian I put Brown. Christian Braun. Yeah. I put Christian Braun slash Jamal Murray. Who? Jamal Murray. No, the first name. Christian Brown. Oh, okay. Is it Brown? Brown. 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 I don't know. Why? Don't ask me. Christian Brown. He got to replace Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Brown. That, yeah, that yeah. was my reason. Um, and they lost Jeff Green, so a big jump from him was significantly. And he played so good in the playoffs yeah. and the finals that it's like, we, we got expectations for you. Brother. So good yeah. that he didn't have to play summer league this year. I think yeah, he should not yeah. have. <laughs> you did your thing, brother. And he's also a guy who went to school for multiple years, so he wasn't like a true like and he went to one year rookie. Um, Kansas. Yes, he did. Yes. Um, and when was the last time he did it win a championship? He's like he's sixteen. <laughs> he's <laughs> no, been winning no, them all. It's, it's been a while though. Yeah, it's definitely been a while. Uh, those are the X Facts for the Western Conference, man. Yeah, it was all the, all the X Factors from from TT Dubs. TT Damn. Dubs. And you ain't got a case on. That could have been a crack. He, got, he got Apple Cal, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't? No, I do. I do. Oh. I mean, I just have insurance on my phone, so I, can, I just pay like a little deductible. Are you one of the people that will break it on purpose so you can get the new phone? Because that's no. kind of a thing. No. I did not know that. Oh, no. I'm not recommending it. <laughs> go They're going to be like, yeah, we could tell by the crack that you dropped. Who did you this? This is a guy on TikTok named Carter PCs, I think is his name. He said, I'm eligible for a new phone. 
and he just dropped his phone on the TikTok and then took it to Apple. And they said, give us a week because they didn't have the new phone in stock. So he had to work with a broken phone for a week. But he got it. Hey. I wouldn't do that. No. Sounds stupid. Yeah. Just get iPhone forever. You can upgrade. That's what I was saying. I, I was going to say, isn't it still called iPhone for life? Is that just Sprint or some shit? No, they, T-Mobile bought Sprint and they don't have it no more. They don't have oh, it no more? Don't. Yeah, there's no longer I thing. remember that was a big thing in like, this is like before I really even had an iPhone, but I was like, man, I want that shit so bad because you just keep upgrading. But we had eighteen. So what you do now? Because I I haven't upgraded my phone in so long. I don't know. I don't know. I've never had iPhone forever, but I know that they, I tried to get it and they told me it was no longer a thing. It's gonna be one day where we switch though. So like iPhone else? is just not it no more, and it's just some new shit. I I, I can see that because I mean everything evolves. everything everything changes. But I just read that Apple's trying to buy ESPN, so I don't know if Apple's going anywhere. Yeah, I think the f- I f- iPhones will be. The, I'll let me Apple. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like they iPhones will be a thing for a long, long time. They they want the rights to the NFL, NBA, WNBA, and MLB, NHL, UFC, PGA Tour, and the Grand Slams, Formula One, and college football's Big Ten and SEC conferences, plus ESPN's two Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. After I did not know ESPN was getting the Super Bowl after twenty twenty six and twenty thirty. Doesn't uh, I don't doesn't know Apple TV it. sometimes have baseball games? Yeah, on? they have baseball and they have the MLS right now. Oh wow! And the, the, it's first year for base. Oh, maybe a second year for baseball. It's not great. Mm. It's got some fun things about can it. Can you watch basketball games VR? Yes, you can. Does it, it actually feel like no? It's it's ass. I was gonna say like, what if they actually had some shit that was made it feel like it literally you were that? in your seat? They, that's like what that. they're trying to do. That I just would don't be think dope. the technology is there yet. Yeah, that would be dope. That shit reminds me of, like some Interstellar type shit. So um, they did. I was there because I have the Oculus, and it was like an event. It wasn't live. It was an event. Like watch whatever game come to the. So I was like, oh, let me see. I was gonna make a video about it. Let's see what VR like for the NBA. Like they have you as if you're sitting courtside, but. It's so everything becomes so pixelated mm. once you're on the other side of the court. Mm. Okay. We're like, you can make out like, oh, that's Steph Curry, but it's not as if you're actually there. It's in not HD the quality is bad. Exactly. So you yeah. you can't really tell who it is until they get on your side of the yes. court. Okay. So you can watch half of the game. Y'all seen that thing, uh, the 2K show with Kevin Durant and it was showing the side by side. Yeah, how know? he was moving. Buckled his head too. Yeah. Is y'all excited for that? No, fuck 2K. How y'all feel about the yeah, Battle Pass yeah. stuff that they trying That's to That's why I'm saying fuck 2K. Oh, true. The Battle yeah. Pass shit is uh, insane to me, bro. Because you already pay $60, $70 you're, you're for a game. You're paying $70 to get in. You're paying $70 for, for a bill. You're paying $100 for a bill. Now, you said 60 brother. It's $100 for a bill. To get up to, what, an $85, $100. And then again, this is optional. The, se- the Battle Pass is optional. But they're asking you, at the most, to spend $20 a season, extra $20 a season, which equates to $200 if you look at how many seasons there were for last year. So that's $200. Plus a hundred tick for the bill. That's three hundred dollars plus a seventy to get the goddamn. Plus, bill. what if I want to go play my team? Exactly. Or maybe you want to get some fucking Gucci flip flops. That's another. You got to go get some VCs. No, just I was talking about it in my crazy. chat. That's the craziest shit. Is just how like. So I asked them. I was like, Do you think companies pay two K to be in the game for like the yeah. brand recognition, or the opposite? Two K pays them to be in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think the brand <laughs> pays two K. Yeah, it's kind of like that promo type shit. I think it's the other way around. Because it's not like 2K don't be adding brands that people don't know of. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? True. They, they Like, N- Mitchell and Ness don't need 2K. But that's 2K kind of need Mitchell and Ness to get the NBA cool outfits and that's stuff. True. That's oh. true. Palm Angels. You think th- they're yeah, paying exactly. Palm Angels to be in the game? I, th- I think they will. Matter of fact, I can hit my connect because, you know, my my personal mm-hmm. Kenny Beecham line was in and 2K. <laughs> and the reason still, I said is because, like, bro, I understand. Hold on. I was about to say, what the hell is that? <laughs> I understand, like, this is a designer, just like, this is a cool shit to buy. There's no reason that shit should cost 25000 VC for a shirt. For real. Like, be it's literally though. no reason. <laughs> but if they going to do that, give me more than 1000 VC for playing a whole My Career game. Are you going to do your taxes? Um, <laughs> that sounds like a crazy-ass <laughs> transition. But eventually, you're going to do your taxes, yeah. and you're going to see how much money you spent on yeah. 2K, and you're going to be pissed at yourself. I, I told you last no, time. You just, oh, you already know. No, 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 no. When I did my test last time, oh. I told you. And I, I think I asked you too. It was like twelve grand? For you? For you. No, I wasn't that much. It was like maybe it was it was, was dead ass, maybe like five. But Ain't that, that by, crazy. But you I think that was two K and Madden why though you too. Use it as a write off. No, no, you, I, that's you, what I was did. talking about. But that's you still gotta know the numbers. You still have to know the numbers. Yeah. But I just went on like all my receipts from it, because it's on Xbox, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My my number was crazy. And it's like, I don't even like two K, but I'm spending this much money for this shit. 
I don't even make like if it was different if I made my team content. I don't make content for the game mode that spends money. You don't have yeah. to spend a single dollar to play my my uh, league and stuff. And yet I have well I've probably had twelve different builds this year. That is, that would that's would be funny. Y'all be having like double digit builds. It's just that shit, that's you what would, if you played enough, you would too because it gets boring playing yeah. with the same dude. And you gotta switch the team up. You know, KB want to be a point guard all of a sudden, so now I can imagine D Mills at point guard. No, no do that. it would never happen. Yeah, don't do that. Never will happen. I'll make a point guard just two K. I don't know who the fuck he's gonna Remember, he made a center. It had no rebound because he wanted to make it like himself. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all told me to. We Y'all did, literally said, but we, make we, a, did. we did, we did, we did. He had no <laughs> rebound and no block. He had a decent midi, decent three. I don't even think he got the nigga up to a ninety nine no, making him. He no, got it to. Oh, you mean no, like... I'm talking about when he literally made him in a 2K builder. It was a He didn't even put above stats to get to 99. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you play a 2K this year? Yeah. He said he waiting on it. The only piece of hype that comes with 2K is the fact that we get to play together. Yeah. If that part didn't exist, I wouldn't buy the fucking game anymore. I wonder because how like, it's like how one of the few games we all can play. I think the Pro-Am servers are down when the game comes out. It's gonna, everything's going to be We're going to play regular. Everything's going to be down. It's, it's cross-play, so I'm, I'm prepared y'all see, for something. Y'all seen yeah. the, all like how the new city looks and shit? That no. shit look kind of dope. I, saw, I, ain't gonna that, lie. I saw old gen. You saw old gen? I seen the new shit. I, I don't know if it's going to be like the like a whole city, how I you hope can walk you around. I hope you ain't think. I hope you ain't look at, I looked old, at the old gen. gen the, was the old, gen, the old gen shit look like it was cracking though? A little bit, yeah. Bro, it looked like there was all different bios and shit. Like. Yeah. yeah, see, I think he's talking about OG. Oh, shit, I ain't. Then, then that means Did that they take skateboards be out the game? Oh, no, I, probably They not. probably have mobility in the game for you to get around. I'm just, not, I'm looking forward to it for the sense that friendship and gaming, but I, I just, do like I those, just yeah. wish that there was another game. I like <laughs> that you know how to do the story mode now. You know what's yeah. funny? That makes that's, it way more that's enjoyable. That's a good part. Yeah, that's a good part of it. So I put in the chat, too, how they said that they're going to try to incorporate mid-range. Mm-hmm. I see, like, the first comment underneath is, like, are you going to make the court bigger? Cause I always felt like that shit was a thing. Like the court is too small for you to really do anything like guys, that. Like, on the unless park? people are spaced out, like no, how they do in pro game. Oh, like, uh, the whole game. But yeah. one guy can guard multiple people is ridiculous. Sure. Yeah, bro. yeah. Mm-hmm. There should be some shit where he has. You have to pick your poison. You saying yeah. my Demar build gonna go crazy this year? Maybe my they Demar build was dunking. They said there's gonna be day. more that adrenaline shit too. So if you try to roll for a reach, you just like oh, blocks all the time. Oh, your, your percentage of it like being successful goes down. I like, want a Jared time. Jackson Jr. build this year. Mm-hmm. Let me run the four. As long as you don't get in foul trouble. No, it's let you run the four. What are you doing <laughs> offensively? Shooting threes. Don't ask that yet. We still working on that part. I don't know if I'm making a guard or a wing. Whichever defense, I always. I want to make some. Defense. I'm retired from point guard. I'll run a two at for some at one point. I'm not running no. I like point you guard. as like an off ball score. You do really well. At point guard might be good this year because you don't have to face five five. It's curry slide. Yeah. They also said like this some of the demigod builds where you were tall and max wing don't exist for point guards. Anymore. Yeah. I just don't have faith in the the developers to get excited about the actual game. That's all. I'm a I'm a I, I'm excited. I just like playing 2K with y'all sometimes. Yeah. You, I, my theory was, I'm pretty sure when did they have the transition from like the Xbox 360 to the Xbox like the one, the one after that? Two 2K. Oh, you said from 360 to, to, to the now. next? No, to one. Oh, to, to one. one. Was that t- 2K 11? That they made that transition and it was like 2K 12. You can get it on the next gen. Let me see. Or the whatever gen it was. Let me see. Because I, I had like some type of theory because I remember it was like. After the we got the new console, 2K was just like, all right. But once they got to like 2K16, 2K17, which is like a couple of years on their new system, it was like perfect. And it's like three, four years since we got the new the new console. So mm. I'm like, maybe this this the year where they get that shit right. I feel it right. looks it, from the looks that sh- they hitting up they hitting a stride from the look. Some mm. of that shit look crazy, like the movement. That KD shit look wrong. They I ain't got one for Paul George too. Side by side, mm. look crazy. I'm looking, bro. It's actually a lot later than that from 360 to Xbox One. I'm at 2K14, and it still ain't. That's still 360? Still I 360. remember. Oh, 2K14 is the, the last. Yeah, I think it has to be two. Yes, because 2K13 was Jay-Z, right? Uh, Yeah. yeah. I remember because when y'all moved on to the next console, I ain't had the next. I had to wait for like my birthday or some shit, and I was still <laughs> playing like association on 2K13. I remember I used to see Darren Williams all the time on fucking Brooklyn. <laughs> but, like, I remember it was like always had that Jay-Z soundtrack on it. The Jay Z soundtrack went hard, boy. For real. My name is Hey. Hey, you should. Oh, what? What else is there to, to chat about? Your honeymoon. Yeah. 
Oh, I did go on a honeymoon. On a vacation. On a vacation. The first vacation in, in my life, really. Because, again, I don't count the work trips. Because even though we be having fun, you still yeah. have work. Um, so I never really count those. This is like one that was like no work involved. Even though I had some Did it meetings, feel weird? It felt weird as shit. I have a, a um, notepad in my phone where I was just writing down shit that I want to like film when I get home. So like I was still like in the content mind frame. Uh, but it was it was real dope, man. We went to, we flew into Tucson, Arizona, then drove like an hour into the desert. Did y'all do the driving or was there like a I driver? I did. They, they did have like a... We pick you up at the airport shit. But I want, you know, me. I want to go to like Whole Foods and get like snacks for the room oh, just okay. in case I didn't like the food or whatever. Um, so we went to Whole Foods and then we dipped off to the spot. And it was it was dope, bro. The only complaint I have is that Arizona's fucking hot. That was it. That was the only downside. Did y'all I argue Any once? scorpions? Did we argue? We no scorpions, which I was disappointed in because I wanted to see some scorpions. I didn't want to touch it, but I wanted to see them. We did not argue one time. But yeah. guess what we did when we got home? <laughs> Arguing. <laughs> we definitely got to, not not an argue, disagreement. We, we definitely. Okay, let me not say argue. Y'all bicker once. No, literally okay. not That's one good. time the entire the, the entire time, bro. We were still in our it was literally a honeymoon phase. That's crazy. Is a uh, phase. is Avery getting a sibling? Was it like that type of honeymoon? Mm-hmm. I hit y'all. Let you know at the end of the month. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but we we had a good time. Yeah, inside, yeah, the pictures, outside. The pictures and videos you were sending was dope. That shower looked amazing. So we only yeah. used that shower one time. Uh, Thank you, man. That outdoor no, shower. No, yeah, the outdoor shower. Shower. Oh. I, yeah, I should put some context on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all was gone for like a week. <laughs> the room. That's why I smell like that snake boot air. <laughs> the room that we was at. Had an indoor shower, outdoor shower, and a big ass tub. The one they took, we only used the outdoor shower once. See, I was in that tub. We was in the tub a few times. But tubbing is fucking weird to me. It's, was it big enough? You, it was big enough. You don't like, like, oh, you don't like wet skin? I, I am small too, but it was, it was a huge tub. But we didn't use the outdoor shower more than once because we were out doing activities all day. So, and, and in Arizona, it's hot. And then when the sun go down, it's fucking cold. So by the time we got back to the room, it was too cold to be outside showering. You supposed to take that bath? And fill it up with almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I just seen somebody the make some almond milk. The did some romantic shit for us, though. How did they make almond milk? You take it. Uh, you soak the almonds for like 24 hours. Oh, yeah. Put it in the blender, and it's like... You, like, strain vanilla it. Vanilla and water, and you just, like, mix okay. it up. And that's it. Interesting. It's just, it's just a good time. We got to be on some horses. We got to do... Um, how was that riding a horse? Oh, oh sorry, I <laughs> I did not ride the horse. Oh, we did not ride the horse, but we were with the horses. Oh, um, they didn't let you get on get on them, but you got to like. So it was this. I think I mentioned this to y'all. The one reason why I was hesitant to go there is because it's like this ultra spiritual place where they want you to be in tune with crystals and shit, oh. and that's just not who I am. Oh, shit. Power, power to the people that do that type of shit. But part of the horse thing was like a horse therapy. Mm. We're supposed to help you with your communication and leadership. So some of the people that took the class with us, it was a lady from Sweden. She said her company in Sweden flew her here to help her with her communication and leadership. So as we had to be horse wranglers, basically, where we had to tell the horse what to do without verbally saying it. So you had to use your body. You had to use a, a whip, but you never hit the horse. But, like, you know, the whip to kind of direction it. And it was it was kind of cool. Can I take this back with us? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way a job in America doing that. Like, no, you know what? That's that's not that's not really true. You just uh, said not chosen, not our job. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it was fine. It was it was a good time. The spa was what it made it worth its money though. The spa oh, was yeah. beautiful. Massages was a one. So massage was a one. They asked me the I first day. I this in the city spa. In New oh York. yeah, we did go. True. Uh, you know what? Let's give them some credit. It was that was a, had, that was a they nice had that one spot. There. Mike had the sniffles and Mike said, I didn't go. Go. I've been to the spa though after that, so I've been good. What kind of spa? That's boss. Hey, that, you know that's my experience. I'm glad you're like, here. Mike, you a freak. Why? We come back in, I think, from smoking cigars. Songs is playing. Until then, come on, let's dance. We look over. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Him, him and his girl tonguing each other. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they in love. I'm, I told them, I'm like, look at that new love. Uh, I thought he was gonna say we. They had what this? They had that juvenile song going. You oh, like, yeah. with the <laughs> we were going crazy. Yeah. yeah, that was expected. Yeah. But they were playing like some Temptation song. And he kissing them passionately. <laughs> my first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I we just got the pictures from the wedding today, and it's they they killed this shit. Some of these pictures are 
hard, bro. I, yeah, let me look at that picture of Terrence again, kissing that puppy. Yeah. <laughs> said, dude. Bro, but that one, I know we talking about like joking around kissing that puppy. It was that one dude. He oh, said, yeah. Come here. He started tonguing that, that was, motherfucker that's woke. down. That's yeah, woke. That's woke. That's woke, Mike. That's, that's woke. woke. I did All not these know that. Woke. I that did not woke, know that was bro. woke this whole time. Yes, bro. Walt is my stepmom's dad. I did and not know. I would have said what's up. I would have said what's up to him, dead ass, if I knew yeah. who that was. He do look different from maybe the last time you saw him because he's just older. For sure. I thought that nigga worked there, <laughs> dead ass. I thought like that's the reason why he just like felt comfortable doing this. No, shit. like he was no, doing was, Walt, yeah, Walt was. There's a lot of good stories Bro, about Walt. Love Walt. That the man puppet, like her husband, had walked over there. He was looking dead at Walt, <laughs> like like he was about to beat his. Oh uh, uh, yeah, Walt was a good dude. I, I actually, that's funny. Because a lot of people after was asking who Walt was. Because I guess he did some other shit that I didn't see. Like, who was it? Oh, that's my, I guess, granddad, I guess I could say. That's my granddad. He, he look crazy, dude, but we love him. No, this picture with the cigars go hard. I'm telling bro. you, bro. And that's not even all of them. Wait till we get all of them. I'm going to make sure I throw them in the chat so everybody Jesus can see them. Hard. We got, it's a lot of hard pictures that they sent me, bro. And I'm like, yeah, I'm happy I paid y'all the money. You I paid see Kyron in this one. He don't got the top, <laughs> the top button on Kyron his Kyron was a damn mess. At the ceremony. I'm looking at the pictures. This fucking suit jacket is wrinkled. Oh, he he, he's not buttoned up to the top. We like, bro, who, who, why did I let him do that? I didn't even notice <laughs> that he was wrinkled as hell. Like, why we, did I let him do this? And it's crazy, KB. He had all the resources to not be wrinkled. We were just we, saying that, that. We had an iron. We had the steamer. We had everything he could have possibly needed. I personally brought good. a steamer for everybody. Yeah. And Kyron okay, just didn't use picture. it. This picture is my background. That's how hard it is. Hey, do. which one? Because because look at my background right now. Hold on, hold on. Oh, how do I see that? I don't even fucking. Oh yeah, it's the sick one of the cigar pictures. Oh, it's just shit, it's clean, bro. It's clean. This picture hard too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. hated they made us do that twice because it didn't feel the same. This, like a time you know what this remind me of? What's that? But remember that picture of us as kids when you holding the Oh, trophy? I might have to tweet that one. I might have to tweet that one. <laughs> the picture of us all like in that triangle thing. Yeah. That was that, that was shit hard. That was yeah. hard. Oh yeah, that that was hard. Because when she was saying we want to flock like yeah. a like a bunch of birds, I was like, I don't yeah. know what the fuck she's talking about. But when you look at it, it's actually clean as hell. They had the big niggas in the back. I'm looking at it. And you can't see blocking John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, John he looked little as hell in this blocking picture. Blocking Mason. Literally, Mason is in here. Bro, that's you can't zoom see in him. on Kyron neck in that picture. Yeah, I look at Kyron neck at every picture, bro. <laughs> look at all of us. And look at his <laughs> neck, bro. His neck is actually big as shit, though. When you think about bro. it, he probably couldn't. <laughs> because Terrence back here looking like he he related to Joel from Pick a Side. <laughs> they don't probably know what he was talking about. Like on the top button of his dress shirt, you supposed to have at least you know buttoned up, whatever. His <laughs> neck is out. <laughs> Literally, yeah, you couldn't button it up because his neck was too thick. Too thick. Thick neck out, boy. The dude that was helping us get dressed, he tried to do it, and Kyron started choking. <laughs> he said, too tight, too tight. Me <laughs> <laughs> and Kyron was rapping something. I'm throwing bees up. Yeah, I was looking at I think that had to be, um, that was in the first group, so it had to be a Millie. Oh, okay. I think that's Bro, what was going no, on. no. That's why I say Lil Wayne is a fucking goat. A Millie came on. Everybody, it don't matter who you was. And it's was fed that shit bar for 15 bar. 15 minutes, um, 15 Years old and somehow bar Millie, for bar, it didn't matter who you was. And you everybody know what? got up. The, my one downside of the, about the wedding is that the DJ was mid. It was mid as hell. But yeah. we had two, two, three songs and we all felt really good. We should have put pressure on his. Ears. We did. We should have. We should have. And the music played was clean. By Glorilla. Yeah, it was clean. But I think that was that was the right thing to do. I think my oh. grandma was there and shit. All oh. right, he wanted. It. <laughs> but they did. They, he did walk up to me like, "Are you okay with us playing WAP?" I know. Didn't Kyron ask you that? Yeah, I'm like, sure. I don't really get it. No, if that's what's gonna have the ladies dancing, they was dancing. They was dancing. They were. Yeah, like, do do y'all thing. What song y'all was juking to? I got a. Was it juke? Oh yeah, they was. Uh, it was at the beginning. Let me see. I got a video on my phone. KB say. <gasps> oh. It was at the beginning. He did that for. Yeah, bro. Okay, that shit felt like prom. <laughs> That's what that felt like, <laughs> bro. This is. I don't know if I should tell this on the podcast or wait to after. Man, tell it. So y'all know how. Saying mama involved. Yes, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes. Shout bro. out. Shout <laughs> out. Shout out. <laughs> so, boy. so um, so we, we we dropping Avery <laughs> off. My Michael Jordan. So we could go on our honeymoon. We take it to grandma's and we talked about the wedding. Yada yada yada. And we were talking about dancing. We were like, everybody enjoyed themselves. 
And then Suzanne's mom was like, I didn't have a drink of alcohol, but something came over me while I was dancing really hard. And then her stepdad was like, you did one thing with your butt. <laughs> and I tried to stay cool, but I start fucking cracking up. And they were like, what's fun? They were like, what's funny? And Suzanne was like, uh, uh, Contreras' friends were talking about that move. <laughs> and her face got red. And she was like, um, she was like, oh, man. Can I ever see them again? Like, <laughs> am I gonna be so embarrassed to look at them again? And Suzanne was like, Don't, "Man, they was they was having fun. They was having fun with it." I saw her literally two days ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, she, cause she dropped off she Avery. Dropped, to she y'all. came to my house to drop Avery. Around. Yep, yep. Shout out to y'all for taking Avery for a couple hours because that that came in clutch for us. So thank she you. slept. Your flight like, was for two hours. So our flight was delayed, but this is unrelated. To oh. it. But yeah, our flight was delayed. So she slept the whole time, basically. She slept for like an hour and a half. The other hour or two, she was up. How, eating. how was she with the cats? Nothing. She wants to be friends with the cat, actually. Yeah, I know. She wants a cat so bad. Like, she I wants to do a cat, bro. You want to take my cat? I don't. I don't like cats. Bro, my cat be cutting off my stream. <laughs> what? I, oh, yeah. I've been there a few times. Yeah. Because, like, on my computer, there's a power button. And I guess, like, she likes to jump on there. Put a cage oh. on it. I put a cage on it. I put some shit on top of the power button so you can't. I don't know how, but it, it moved. <laughs> no, no. It was fine for, like, a week straight. And it moved just a tiny bit. Like, I must have tried to, like, turn on my PC or something. I forgot to put it. Next time I stream, she jumped right on that motherfucker button. That shit be blowing me, bro. My cousin never turned off my PC, but he's tried jumping on it. I, he's now knows not to get on it no more. you said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're strong. Yeah. And when, Kat said. When y'all go to a spa or a massage and they ask, would you prefer a male or a or, or female? What, what, what do y'all prefer? I've never been. I usually, I usually say Contreras. female. Stop asking me questions you know the fucking answer. <laughs> but on some real shit, <laughs> on some real shit, I've only had a female. If they are going I, to, you go out to eat, they say you want some old food or some new food. Which way <laughs> you no, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I've, had a, I've only had a female. But I can see the reason why you would want to do to That's do it because saying. they have more they strength. They have the pressure. They, they have can the have strength. more pressure. Like I imagine that Derek would probably, I mean, though he loves women, as far as like getting a quality massage, men probably work yeah. best because yeah. he could get into When we went to New York, back. you had a man. I did. Yeah, he, but that wasn't intentional. He was like the only one available. <laughs> 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 I mean, he had him a man. I had me a lady and I enjoyed myself. So the only reason I asked I like soft touching. I went. I don't want no big strong Derek back there. If you're right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I have both on this on this retreat. I have both. The man was better. The man was better. Next but time no, I go, I'm going. I'm getting the man. What? <laughs> I promise you this though. I, the place I get my nails done. Yeah. I called, and she was basically saying, the uh the only, the only person he had at that time was out was I okay with a man, and I'm like, yeah, like come on, man, her, like you know what I'm saying, like it's your I'm nails. a grown ass man, yeah. like yeah. come on now. Um. But I guess a lot of people. A lot of people don't. No, yeah. I don't want a man to cut my nails. So I'm like, no, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of the nail thing is kind of different. He fucking snapped. <laughs> <laughs> he snapped, and I go back to him. The only reason I didn't that motherfucker was coughing and shit. Like, oh, <laughs> I thought he was gonna Come say on, like man. every Come time on. he called a nail shop, he like make sure you give me Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But he was co- Alejandro. <laughs> I just, I just that sound like a nigga that do nails, man. <laughs> no, it don't. <laughs> it doesn't, it at, doesn't all. at all. <laughs> give me a don't, name. Don't don't do not give him a name. <laughs> this is not a good conversation to have. I think Alejandro yeah. was good. Alejandro's fine. It's just a it's just a, a name. random name. It's just a random name. <laughs> Nobody has ever done my nails with Amy Alejandro. <laughs> but um but a massage with somebody touching me. That's funny you say wow. that though, because when I first started, he did say, Is this a good amount of pressure for you? <laughs> I'm like, and I actually said, maybe a little more. I like <laughs> I like firm pressure. I like real good firm pressure. Same, for real, like for I, real. that's what I yeah. want. I I don't Going to massages with the idea of going to sleep. I know some people go for the relax. I want to be relaxed. I, I want like, to walk out of there like my back. I want to make sure of both. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I want to be relaxed. I've yeah. definitely found myself snoring in massages on accident. See, when I, I, I when I went to the too. lady, it was definitely more like more just rub. I know I mm. felt like she was just rubbing me and stuff. I'm like, that's fine and shit. But like, massage. I want like, you to get she, in them knots. My, and mama shit. Too, she be going like this. On See, my yeah, shit. that's what I needed. She didn't give me no elbow. Elbow. Yeah, elbow she be lady, I had put rocks. See, yeah, all those hot rocks, yeah. hot stones. I've had the yeah. rocks before. That shit, that shit is raw. That my favorite part is when they be cracking your fingers or like your pinky toes. Yeah, that shit. That, that shit, shit feel raw. Toes. That's specifically just the pinky toes. <laughs> uh, but, but you, you want, don't one of y'all get waxes? 
I, I did. Got I one yesterday. I have wax before. Oh, you did? Yeah. You have? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, not, it's not as you, bad as you think. Is it okay if a man do that? No, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly, I'm be honest. With you, I wouldn't care. I, I haven't done it with a man, so I don't know. Yeah. Just because I'm not, it's a it's a woman touching yeah. stuff. But you don't. Well, at least me, I didn't get aroused because it's not in a no, sexual I didn't way either. at all. No, so okay. if it was but a man, I, I wouldn't feel. One no of my different. friends who went said that the lady said, like, you know, the body is a body. So if you if anything does yeah. happen, like she did. Yeah, one of my people said that as well. It was like she said some different stuff happened. Don't feel too bad, but like. Everybody's different people, obviously. But, but you I know can't look funny? at that. She's she's it's painful. She's stripping oh, for sure, for sure. That's hair just, out of you. It's just like a massage. Like I just want to be relaxed. But mm, yeah, I don't know arouse or shit. But like the opposite side to that, I had a, a friend, and he was telling me that that's what the lady said. But he was like, the last thing you that you think of happens. He fought it. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. gee. <laughs> Oh my God! That's never he happened said to me. He was so fucking embarrassed. Yeah. I bet she's. I bet that's not a new story for her. She probably no. going through that a lot of times. So it's for not sure. that big of a deal. I just make sure. To, I mean, it's been a while since I've done it, but I I, I tipped the whale because it yeah. was like yo shit was a bush. <laughs> the first time I went, I was on some D Mill shit. Yeah, they're not yeah. gonna know what that what? mean. Oh, D Mills back in the day was a jungle. Yeah. He, How would you know? By his accounts. I ain't, he, he I ain't admitted. What the fuck is He's told on? us. He admitted that he ain't have his first shave till 24. 24, that's... Nah, I didn't say 24. What age? It was like 21-ish. It was a long time. Whoa. 21 and 19. That motherfucker was creeping down the legs. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't wear shorts at all that summer. I wasn't getting no action. <laughs> oh, I hygiene, 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 hygiene. I get hygiene, that. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Used, he was you brave. You was giving action to yourself. <laughs> You was giving access to yourself. So the action with yourself with all of that. Oh, man. I know your sh- basketball practices and football pads. One two day, day. Mills is just going to come up full head of hell. And it was just full <laughs> <laughs> Like, damn, you got that Jamal Murray shit on your head. <laughs> I got to get out of here soon, bro. Y'all are crazy. To you, it's 21? Don't hair start growing you like a teenager, an early teen? Yeah. 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 Boy, you went almost a decade. <laughs> <laughs> but that was no crazy. haircut. Yeah. I he he bad at now. He's his hygiene is crazy now. What he's going you, what are you what, going monthly now? Yeah. What <laughs> made you start then? You if I action. got some action, yeah. He's getting some action. Uh, yeah. and I was like, oh. your Donos and uh <laughs> <laughs> before you got the action, you did it or you, or after you was like, I need to do something about this. It was after. Okay. I was like, Yeah. Dang, so <laughs> somebody did tame that jungle though. <laughs> what did, made, she, did you feel like damn I'm kind of something? bogus? No. Or? Nobody You know when you trim it, you get a few extra you actually yes, you, so you like hurt yourself. No. It was dark. <laughs> <laughs> she was like Motherfucker started coughing up a hairball. Derek, that's crazy. Bro. I never knew this. That is insane. It was. I just felt like ain't nobody down now. <laughs> I was just going about life. <laughs> that's crazy, oh, bro. Um, that's crazy. Cody was asking me like, was it worth it? My the place I went to the honeymoon, and I still don't have an answer. The price you told me, it doesn't sound worth it. Damn, he should know. It probably no, no. It. No, I mean, I don't regret spending that money because it was like it was worth it for the intimacy. Yeah, that's the instigator. But no, but it was expensive. It was, yeah, it was pretty expensive, especially for like the amount of days. Twelve thousand dollars for that shit was crazy. It was. <laughs> but I also think we didn't get the full experience because we weren't doing the classes every day. Oh, okay. It was like different shit that you could have done that we just we was more on the relaxation tip. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's not bad though. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm not regretting. How was the food? Amazing. That was the one part that I was excited about because what did what did you have that was new? Um, everything, literally, literally. Everything. He told me he had risotto and he liked it. I was like, wow. So the best thing that happened the entire honeymoon was one of the. I keep, I'm going to keep calling them classes. They're not classes, not learning shit. But like one of the classes that I signed up for, we signed up for. It was an extra two hundred dollars on top of the shit we already paid. But it was like it was supposed to be you and like a group of five other people. Y'all have the chef specifically cook for you, right? Instead of you going because it's. It's one restaurant on the property that everybody goes to. It was specifically just you and the chef and five other people. Nobody else signed up other than me and Suzanne. So instead of it being five of the people, they were like, we're going to upgrade you to the one that costs 300 We paid for the $200 package, the $300 package, which is just you and your partner in the actual kitchen of the, mm-hmm. the restaurant, five-course meal where the chef is coming to your table and he's cooking for you. He's telling you what he's doing and why he's doing it. And for the people that don't know, I'm allergic to a lot of shit. 
So it's hard for me to go to restaurants and stuff. Your dad talked about it. Your ass is sitting around eating hot country curls, hot flames. Yeah, it was. Day. Yeah, and I, if I touch that shit, I'm gonna explode. But um, because of that, because of our restrictions, he would tell you like instead you like of using that, shit that much. No, I mean as in like my body would not accept that uh, shit. Anymore. Oh. Um, but he would say like instead of using dairy here, I'm gonna use this instead because you're allergic to dairy and shit like that. And the la- the entree dish was a New York strip steak mm. with this kind this potato that I've never tasted before, I've never seen it made like that. It was amazing, some asparagus, but it was some sauce. Best shit I've ever had in my life. He would have on lo- the steak on the steak. He would have loved me. I'd be like, make some fucking chicken sandwich. <laughs> <Some chicken sandwich." laughs> so, so they already had the menu planned for you. Uh, so we had one dish in the entree or the whole thing that was ass. It was uh, like tomato. It was like a salad. But it wasn't any greens. It was like tomatoes. It was fucking Ew. cucumber. It was like, why the fuck? And there was some sauce. I would have blew them. Put that shit to the side. I, that's what you think I did. You think I, t- I tasted it because I wanted to give them the due diligence, but it was awful. I was like, no, nah, you can take this, bro. The risotto was amazing. We had scallops for the first time. Hey, take that shit back there and put some <laughs> lettuce in it, man. What the fuck you doing? Yeah. Anyone can cook. Anyway, yeah, it was, it was a good time, though. I don't begin, but like Derek said, for the price, I don't know if it's worth it. But it was fun. It was. Is it because y'all booked it later? No, that was just what the price normally oh. is. Because I know some places, like if you book, ain't this not number a, two? Oh yeah, it is. A, you did the second best in the world. Is, oh yeah, oh, it was the second country. best spot. Oh no, yeah, then that makes sense. Yeah, they, that, yeah, yeah. That time. In 2022, specifically, it was voted second best spot in America. Oh, that's. And that the spot sense. part is what makes it, in my mind, maybe worth it because the spot was that elite. But the whole resort together, maybe not. Did you go swimming? Yes, we did. Uh, every day we was at the pool because it was fucking. Uh, can you swim? Like in the deep water? Like, can you go in the deep water? No. Oh. Mm-hmm. Can you? Yeah. My mom made me take swimming classes. I mean, I, sh- I'm, I feel like I would be able to, but I'm not about to go out there and fucking try. The swim coach ain't nothing more embarrassing than a grown ass man getting saved oh, by yeah. a lifeguard. That's where I learned how to swim at. My mom made me go to like their swimming camp in the summer. After, it was like after basketball camp. So I would go to basketball camp and then I would go to swimming camp right after. I envy that. We I didn't have he that. He was like, jump. Summer. My mom deep as in jump. I'm my like, mom why was the a, fuck would I do that? He's like your body gonna naturally bring. And once right. I discovered that, I was like, oh shit. That's what they did. At, they literally put you in the deep water. You don't learn how to swim in shallow water. They make you learn how to swim in the deep Y'all water. I believe they do that shit with babies. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I've seen those classes are real. Didn't you do it with your baby, KB? No. Mm-mm. Oh. Uh, sh- well, I did it not with my baby. Extent, I did it with you. When you Zan's was, mom you know, has a pool. In oh, that's what y'all did. Bro, okay. my mom, she's like a fish. Like she one of the motherfuckers that love being in the pool and stuff. I remember when I was young, this is like, I had to be like nine or some shit. Because this dude, like, he was one of our neighbors. We was all at the pool. And he kept pushing me into the pool. And so, obviously, as a kid, you want to get your gift back. I pushed him in the pool. He couldn't, like, swim. He couldn't swim. He couldn't swim. Damn. Damn. That's crazy. Hey, I'm going to sound Last like. house shit. I'm going to sound like an asshole. That's what the fuck he gets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? Why is he pushing you in a pool um, and he can't swim? <laughs> Who saved him? The lifeguard? His Mike. Mike, Mike like just jump back in. Oh, <laughs> I forget. I forget. It might have been like his dad or something. Uh, but it wasn't like no serious thing. It wasn't like the 12 feet. It was like four feet or some shit. Oh, uh, he really bogus. He couldn't handle this stuff in four feet, but he pushing people. <laughs> pushing somebody into four feet is dangerous as hell in the first place. Like, <laughs> really yeah, you, can, you can actually hit your head. That's yeah, why that's crazy. I can't watch videos when niggas are jumping into a pool. Because mm-hmm. I was like, bro, anything, like if you miss that water. Yeah, they'd be on top. When they yeah. jump from like 20, 30 yeah. feet into a it's lake wild. or something. I'd be this like. This girl who went to high school with us, she was older than us. Her boyfriend is paralyzed because they was out one night in like a boat, like a, he's like in a lake or something. But he was being goofy or drunk or whatever, and he dove out thinking yeah. it was That's deeper like than it was. Oh like shit! Concrete. And he's he's paralyzed. Damn, paranoid. Oh, it's tough, bro. Once yeah. one mis- one second of mistake it could change your life like that. That's crazy. If there's no signs that say you could jump from here into that, don't do it. Yeah. Even if there are signs, don't yeah, fuck I'm with not going to be jumping. I'm not doing that. Just don't jump. Just sit your ass down and scurry in like the rest of us. Jump. I'm one of them I'm one of them dudes that at the pool, I be hanging on the ledges. <laughs> like when I was in DR, I jumped into a cenote. Like they have like a- I, was, I remember that. That was fun. You just jump off a big pole into a deep ass pool. That's Maybe fun. Said, cannonball. That was a big ass <laughs> cannonball. I had to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now he's about to go to T dot. Toronto gonna I'm be excited fun. about Toronto. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I'm Josh tried to have us with a good ass trip. D-Man I'm not excited nah, about what man, you had said. Who does in the morning? He said flies out in the evening. That means we would have got there, went to bed, wake up, and get then the show and left. Yeah. Oh. And you asked him to get us early. I yeah. like that. Because we yeah, we want to do some shit. Never been to Toronto for the rest of y'all. 
I, we still don't know where we're staying. That's the like what part he of the city. Who finna send it though? Okay, good. I remember they said it was like a block. Like there's like a whole floor of just us. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, it's a block that we got. The venue was so excited to have us. They have like a a hotel that's like one of the nicest hotels in Toronto that they're connected with. To the Four Seasons. So they got us a block of them. Ah, I'm going to say Now I went to the Four Seasons for the wedding that I went to. The best hotel room I've ever been in my Let me life. Get one right wow, there. really? Maybe. We spent Four yeah. Seasons at the Four Seasons twice. Mm. You don't know who said that. Nope. But yeah. I think that Miami hotel was very nice. That might have been the best hotel we've had. That's with that one. hotel, with that balcony? Yeah, that hotel. Oh, yeah, true, true. Whole Foods walking distance. Yeah, the yeah. strip club. On the water. Miami's been number one. Yeah, that Miami one. hotel yeah, was, yeah, was clean. That was clean. Yeah, that probably was number one. I Google best strip club in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> they, do they have like. Regulations like some of the, these other that places. That shit was so fuck. The shit was so. They were saying it was so trash that I just didn't even. I clicked out. Like, I didn't have the energy. We going. Oh, you cold coming up for it. We're going to Houston. We'll be okay. <laughs> Don't even have to waste my time with that shit. If y'all need places to go, I know uh, Armor. You want to hit that one place, right? That one restaurant, or did you go there already when you were up there? Oh, I'm, I go there every time I go to Toronto. Okay. Soto, 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 just Soto, talking Soto. women and vino. Right, right, right. You right, know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. You gonna have to put me on. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's a dope spot. It's got like a, it's got like a, I don't know, like a mob boss Italian restaurant, mm-hmm. low key type of vibe. Do we got to make reservations? Uh yeah, it'd be, it yeah. be busting, and we going on the weekend. It's probably gonna bust. So we should probably make it now. Yeah. Last time I was there, uh, the Barbie movie came out, and it was like this one dude. He was Ken, and mm-hmm. he had like nine Barbies with him and they ate dinner and then he had like a Lambo parked out front and then he had like a he'd have been mad like a G-Wagon or something so like one girl hopped in a Lamb with him and mm-hmm. then the other like six of them was in the G-Wagon and the the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> let me see what's the weather supposed to be like that weekend uh 75 and sunny we'll take that I like 70 yeah, I'll take 75 and sunny any day. Oh, I'm dead. I'm going to have to hit up some people while we're there and say, hey, come come, hang out. You can't make reservations online. You have to call. Oh, well. That's okay. All right, I so guess. it's called uh, the end. Or should I? Nope. Yep. I'm going to have people <laughs> we'll pull down. up to our hotel. Yeah, we'll <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker going to be checking in like, can, can I get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, for sure. Um, What else? Cause they were like, "Oh, we get, Kitty wasn't there, and it was a two and a half hour podcast." Cause he ain't want to close it out. We talked real com. We talked real shit. I know. I was there. I did some relationships. I had stuff. some shit to bring up here, but I don't. I don't think I, it's so. It's been so long into the podcast. I don't think I want to bring it up. We it's two hours. Two hours. Yeah, we'll we'll save. We. I was gonna say we are living in a matrix though. <laughs> like my mind is like I can't believe where we in today. Let's get to it. Fuck it. <laughs> Why not? Social media has like put us in a matrix. Bro. Social media got me feeling like I should have been born in the nineties or some shit. You, you were was. born in the nineties. Well, well, I mean, I was born in the not born in the nineties. <laughs> like I would have lived through the nineties. Hey, you was a crazy. Like I meant dude. to say, I was born in the wrong. But you did live through shit. the nineties. You were born. I was, there. lived through Just fucking three years. Of I didn't anything, know shit that was bro. going on. Hey, like you saying, you wish you didn't experience the technology era. You wish you was born in the eighties. Yeah, so you could have been raised in the nineties. Yeah, that's why I can't. Say, I can't agree with that because we we would haven't we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Exactly. Yeah. That's the only part I'm like I'm happy with social media because it's provided. It's money not the only thing. But the major part I'm talking about is just like I don't know, bro. It's just like a motherfucker that you know. Like for example, let's just say to pay my rent this month, I had to borrow from Mike, and to to. I don't know, to do something else, I have to borrow money from Derek. And y'all know that. Y'all know me. Yeah. But I'm finna go on social media and post a picture with me in oh, yeah. Dior like, um, yeah, with a caption. I got I'm a do- very close story that was, that's about that, but I can't say it on podcast. Some dude it's like, this. to, me, it to me, that's the matrix. You're posting some shit for the internet when at, when the people who are following you like really know, like, yeah. bro, I really know you. Mm-hmm. I really that's know I you. Say, the internet mm-hmm. is not real because I think there's People chase clout, and people feel like you can find a little bit of clout in, like, sympathy. So if somebody might say, like, man, this girlfriend didn't, or this girl didn't show to my date or whatever. But for the most part, people don't post what bad happens to them. Nobody's posting that shit. My life but got cut off. The, the quote-unquote good that's happening is yeah. not real also. Yeah. yeah. Like, the amount of perpetrating and fucking just just exaggerating or flat-out lying, lying 
for no reason. Like, back in the day, if we was in high school and we went to, like, a football game, and me and, and Derek C., I'm trying to talk to this girl, like, if he perpetrated a little bit to boost me up, that's a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it is when you're with your mans and you're young. It's like, if you're a good basketball player, I'm going to talk about you like you're great. If you D1, I'm going to make it sound like you're going to the league. You know what I'm saying? If you sold a little weed, I'm going to act like you fucking Scarface. Uh, <laughs> El Chapo. Just, just hype your mans up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's like, when you're per- what's the re- you're perpetrating for what? For, for cool. Facebook, are we are yeah. we are we serious? To look cool, it's definitely people that post shit on Facebook just because they want. I don't see my kids think or raise they, my they kids. Live that life. I'm finna finally go take a picture and put it on Facebook. Like I'm with my kids all the time. Like, I'm a <laughs> like but your family know the truth. Yeah, you, your your kids, other parents know the truth. Your kids know the truth. So it's like, what are we doing? And yeah. that's what make me feel like we're in the fucking matrix where it's just a. And the reality is, the people that you're doing it for don't do don't not care. give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's the bad part about it all. You ain't never posted a Snapchat and for just for one person to see or Instagram story. I probably have when I was I fucking thirteen. Yeah, yeah when I was you in have. high school. Hell yeah, yeah I, I have. Probably, when I was thirteen. <laughs> but nowadays, that's just no. There's no reason to do that. Mm-hmm. I had this conversation all the time with Suzanne. It's like, bro, especially when you're in a relationship, doing that type of shit is just childish. When you like, I know people in a relationship that would tweet. Sad emojis. Go fucking yeah. talk to your significant other about what's wrong with that you. That was right one of now. the first early agreements me and Dana made. Like oh, anything we're doing is not gonna be like we're not doing that on social media. Yeah, yeah. Like that shit is silly. Yeah. I had uh I had saw a post like a few days ago that said the couples that like post the most about each other on social media are usually the couples that are like the most toxic and unhappy. Yeah. Some people are asking me because I we've talked about my wedding and shit like that. And people are like, man, we ain't seen no videos and no pictures. Like, it's not for y'all. That's that's my like pet peeve, bro. When people are like, you didn't take no videos and no photos. It's like, I I do that. Like, I'm more so in the moment type thing. Yeah. I feel like I should take more pictures and everything like that because it's just that moment. But that's what I think about when it's like most of the pictures. Like, let me post this shit so I can show it to everybody else and they can think like <laughs> more highly of me. Like, yeah, Somebody I'm just trying to live in a moment. <laughs> I'm just trying to live in like the moment or like more so, so that like fuck what everybody else cares about. Like what do I think about it or like what's going on? Yeah. I think people think that because my job is the internet, that my life is the internet. That's just not the case. Mm-hmm. For real. That'd be the thing that I'd be trying to get people to understand. Like I, I don't mind doing shit when it's job related or when I want to make some content, but like if I didn't when we this- going to Mike House, then they know we having a kid pick. Y'all should stream it. It's like No. Uh, are y'all so paying? The- Hmm? Are y'all about to donate hundreds of dollars? Right. Because <laughs> otherwise, we just want to chill with the homies. You feel me? If I didn't like do like the podcast and everything, I probably would not be on social media at all, really. I be saying it all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm and not on it as like, much as this, I used to be. Doing this shit, like it kind of requires you to be on social media constantly. So yeah. it's kind of like burning Twitter out. Twitter just paid me too. Ray just paid me too. Yeah, me and KB was on yesterday. <laughs> I'm signing up. I still ain't This ain't really no It ain't really nothing. It, How much you made? 114 I was at $15. Oh, I made almost two hundred. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, you on your Y'all got to get a little. Uh, I need to tweet like a couple times a day because I be forgetting to tweet. Get a little controversial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What'd you say? He's like Twitter love them threads. Twitter love threads. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Derek Jones Jr. just signed with the Mavs. Here's a thread on what I think he can add to the Mavs. <laughs> Holy shit, brother! Knock it the fuck off, please. I'd rather you just make a thread of Luca's greatest fucking moments. They always doing that. Derrick Jones Jr., potential X Factor. Center. <laughs> yeah. What point. can I put Sit on? To, you know, oh, I'll just say shit. Like, I'll be like, you could tell when we in the offseason. Motherfucker just be saying shit. Yeah. This motherfucker almost it. LeBron, that would have been on the Bulls. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that was real. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they ain't want to trade. They couldn't come up with a Lou All Dang trade. What's some shit I can say Travel right now? Travel All Dang to the fucking airport myself to get them other dudes on the team. Motherfuckers is getting on ass, too. Motherfuckers saying uh, some of these people. They'll take like they'll take this podcast, which is our content, and they'll put it on Twitter and gain and in, in gain interaction. I'm seeing people complain about that too. Yeah. yeah, stealing content in general. HOAs just did that and it pissed me off. Where you, y'all saw the video of that little dude that was shooting basketballs yeah. but he was throwing it like hooks from threes. Yeah. They took a screenshot of Patrick Beverly's tweet and put it on the video and put it on the video. But Patrick Beverly tweeted something. I forgot what he said. Like, how was he getting that shot off at Patrick Beverly Pod? HOH posted it, but took off the at Patrick Beverly podcast of the tweet. Oh, and in my damn. mind, that's fucking dirty. 
that's just dirty. That's just a dirty way to run your business. Because if you're gonna use his tweet, use his tweet in its entirety if you want to use it for impressions. What's the point to even take off his? And, and he's not even like a competitor. That's the problem. I'm just, <laughs> it blows my mind when shit like that happens. And it's not a specific HOH thing. People do it all the time. But it's like it's dirty business. It's like. If if you're not giving credit, no, you see a lot of credit. credit. Yeah. You well, see a lot of Twitter accounts do that with like small like accounts that are trying to take, grow. Or some shit. To, right. That's tweet why away. I love our fan. I I done caught a lot of people taking my shit and putting it on. My foot, especially All Star Weekend, we interview play. I interviewed Kyrie. A great question about yeah, just took it and, and no people credit. was taking yeah. it and people were tagging me. That's Pia. That's Pia. And I'm like, yeah, y'all. Oh yeah, well, I remember. I, I had asked. I asked somebody. I asked that Giannis question. People was giving credit to the Atlantic. Mm. And, and I was yeah, like, nah, the athletic, I mean, the athletic. They, they were just there. They didn't yeah. ask the question. I got, got me fucked up. That shit bothers the hell out of me. And it's never going to go away. But, like, as a creator, if a motherfucker's yanking my shit without credit, that pisses me off to the teeth. I get on asses. Yeah. I'm getting on asses. Should I call Drew right now and be mad at him for it? It wasn't Drew. But I just think, I just feel the Patrick Beverly case, you, everybody tweeted about it. Use somebody else's tweet if you don't want to use the one that has the Patrick Beverly podcast on it. I'm just happy to hear it was some basketball being posted. <laughs> Facts. I seen some shit the other day, and I'm like, I was just looking at it, and I'm like, oh, damn, HOH posted this shit? This shit ain't had nothing to do with it. Don't get me started. It was some funny that shit, That little dude with the left hand shot, that shit was crazy. That was clean. That was, yeah, he that's was the type of, he, he that's the type of motherfucker that'll get a board on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's also the, the type of person Mike one. would look at and be like, I want to guard him. And, and he's he's get get <laughs> Why you got what two points? Oh, uh, hey, oh, here we go. Here that, we that's go. that's fine. <laughs> I ain't a hooper no more. As long as you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now the internet's not real. I I keep wanting to express that. That don't mean don't go on there because please watch our videos and shit. Uh, but don't equate what you see on the internet to yeah. real life shit. Don't ask me for twenty dollars and try to post something like you balling because then I know you. You just a nigga asked me came for $20. into my t- nigga came to my t- stream yesterday. His first message. He's talking about some. I lost my wallet at the gym. You can spot me $20 oh. so I can get something to eat. I'll pay you back tomorrow. <laughs> what would say? Ban his ass. I used to do I used to do shit like that for people. <laughs> but it would it would just have to be like a feel. I've yeah. done that before though. There's been plenty of fans like, man, I'm just fucked up right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I'm like, Definitely. here. Here go, here go $15. Yeah. But everybody who asked, nah. No, some of us just follow me right then and then. That was his oh, first no. message. But I had a dude who asked. If me Burner asked you that, you give him his tw- give him the 20? Okay. Somebody asked now, me. Now, I'm glad you said it because he finna message me today. Somebody <laughs> asked me before and I clicked on their profile and like majority of their tweets was like under Cash App shit. So I'm like, nah. Yeah. No. Nah. Nah. But I've had people that I know and I've seen and they like, man, it's a tough month. Da-da-da. There you go, bro. Don't even worry about yeah. it. Weezy, I see you got this this camera for sale. We may have to, we may have to chat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, chat. for sure. Let me know some, man. All right, yeah, we're we'll going to chat so. about that. I got too many right now. So. Yeah, and I got too little. So oh, yeah. We're going to work it out. Chop it up, for sure. All right. Is that is it wrapped up? Yeah. I got plans. TTWtour.com. So wrap it up. For Toronto. And after Toronto, we got another spot in Houston. So just know we coming to your city more likely than not. We appreciate all the support. Um, Because we will be gone in Toronto, there will be no next Saturday show. But as always, I'm sure we're going to record the episode and get it up to y'all. Um, regardless. New Rocket, that's Jalen Green. And yeah. I didn't want, uh. yeah. yeah, we coming, y'all. We appreciate y'all. Peace.